So today we're going to talk about life management in eight hours. No, this ain't an eight-hour class. This is life management in eight hours. Oh, we thought that you turned to a deacon. I be uh, where is it? Uh, y'all uh, stop. Y'all stop. Classes. Oh, you were going to have people sleep up in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. No. So life management in eight hours. All right. All right. Y'all get your. I know a lot of y'all want walking with the giants, and I love those classes, but we, with all the problems going on in Israel, we don't need to walk with the giants right now. Do we? I, th- I mean, we do love it, but we got, you know, last week, remember the sister, I read the email that uh, in New York, that uh, the single sister had a miscarriage? She going to send us a message, me and my, my she sent it to my wife. Bishop ain't right. I want to come by your house and give my side of the story. I said, she ain't got no side of the story. What the hell is this? You're a single sister. You had a miscarriage. Unless there's immaculate conception, something's wrong. You was out hoeing. You got caught out there now. That's it. Uh, uh, Bishop, she need a tear drop. Yeah, she need a tear drop for murder on her face. That's what she need. That's gang talk. Or jail talk. All right. So, life management in eight hours. What you're going to find out is that the, the different, there's a, diff, a stark difference between us here at IUIC and, and all the other Israelite camps. A very stark difference. Uh, there's a, many times you may want classes that you love to hear, which is fine, but we're going to give you what you need to survive. And that's very, very important for you as an individual, for your marriages, for your community, all right? We must learn to seek the Lord in everything that we do. Give me Baruch 4 and 1. Who's reading for me? Who's reading for me? Who's reading? All right, more officers, somebody, one of y'all, somebody. All right, MR, are you reading? Oh, there ain't no, there should be a mic on that table. Yeah, give him that mic. Test, test. You said Baruch 4, verse 1, Bishop? Uh, yes, sir. Baruch 4, verse 1. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. Y'all see that? The law that endureth forever. Go ahead. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So... The Bible, what you're going to find out, and some of you know already, the Bible answers primarily everything. You got a question about life? It's in the book. It's in the Bible. That's why it calls it the book of life. Okay? It says if you leave, if you, if you, it says you shall live if you keep it, but die if you leave it. Give me 1 Thessalonians 3. We got to learn to prioritize and organize our time and plan wisely. Let me say it again. We got to learn to organize and most of all prioritize our lives. We got to plan wisely. We got to manage. Watch these three, these three things we got to manage. God, home, and work. We got to learn to manage God, home, and work. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and give me verse 10. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. Night and day, praying exceedingly with, that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. This is Paul's prayer. It says, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. All of us have a certain area in our faith where we lack, meaning lack understanding. Some of us, are we're good on the street, we're powerful on the street, we could break down the history of uh, of the nations and all that. From the Assyrian captivity followed by Babylon, Persian media, uh, uh, Greece and Rome. We're good. But then you come home and your personal life is a mess. You can't keep a job. You don't know how to, you don't get along well with others. Your wife hates your guts. Your, your baby calls your nigga and walks out the room. And you're like, what's going on? I'm bad on the street. You bad to the bone on the street, brother. On video, you look good. But guess what? Personally, you effed up. 
because you ain't got it all together. So that's what today's class we're going to talk about, perfecting that which is lacking in our faith. So we're going to talk about what's lacking, God, home, and work. Give me Psalms 90 and verse 12. Psalms 90 and verse 12. The book of Psalms, chapter 90 and verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You see that part? So teach us to number our days. That means have understanding on your time. Have, be time oriented, okay? So David said to the Lord, teach us to number our days. Because guess what? If we knew that we had one day to live, one week to live, five months to live, we would definitely organize our time much better. But we don't consider time. We feel that we're going to live forever. And that's not so. That's why a lot of brothers and a lot of sisters get caught off guard. All right. So David said what? Read that one again. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. Meaning teach us to number the time that we have. From there, give me Ecclesiastes 3. Verse 1 and 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1. Wait, let me get it. Let me find it first. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Lighton. I appreciate you. <laughs> Go ahead. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. You see that, Paul? And a time to every purpose under heaven. So remember, I don't want y'all to forget, we got to learn to prioritize and organize our time and plan wisely. Read that again. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Go ahead. A time to be born mm -hmm. and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to, to pluck up that which is planted. So you see that time to plant, like if you know anything about agriculture, there's certain seasons you plant and certain seasons that you, uh, what's the word it used? Pluck up. Like you got harvest, harvest season, that's when you're plucking things up. So you, without t time is very important. If you look at the seasons and nature, it's very important. But in our personal lives, we don't consider time at all. Give me... Um, Psalms 127, watch this. Write this down, write this down. There are 24 hours in a day. And I'm gonna make it simple for everybody in here. 24 hours in a day, that means you have, the average you get eight hours for sleep. That's average. Eight hours for sleep, eight hours for work, if you're working for Esau, eight hours, nine to five, and eight hours for God. See how simple that was? Eight hours. Eight hours for sleep, eight hours for work, eight hours for God. Now, how you break that last one down is going, we're going to touch on that, but we're going to see how we each, all of us got to examine ourselves. How do we uh, prioritize and organize our time that we have? Watch this. So, eight hours for sleep. I'm going to talk about that one first because it's simplest, it's easy. Give me Psalms 127 verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 127 and verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, mm -hmm. to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. So he gives his beloved sleep. So sleep is a necessity for the human bodies, a necessity for our minds, for our souls. So it's a vain thing. We go through troubles in our lives, and we sit up late at night worrying. If you can't change it, staying awake ain't going to solve it at all. So David here was saying, get some sleep, rest. So watch this. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 5 and 12. I think it's Ecclesiastes. I'm not sure if it's Ecclesiasticus, but I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 12. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, 
But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Right, that bottom part, the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep because he's always worried about money. If somebody breaking in his, his place, he's rich, he's always stressed. But that top part, the sleep of a laboring man, a working man, is sweet. This is why when we come home from a hard day's work, sisters, we don't need no stress. We want hot bath, cook food, maybe a little, uh, uh, you know, comfort. Yeah, that thing right there. That one right there. And then we want some sleep. The Bible says sleep is sweet for a laboring man. From there, give me Proverbs 20. There comes a time where too much sleep ain't good, though. Some of you brothers know what I'm talking about. Too much sleep ain't good. Some of you sisters know, too, because I get the emails. My husband, all he does is sleep all day. When it's time for him to go to work, he's late. You know what I thought? Just late. Can't keep a job. I don't know what's wrong with this dude. Proverbs 20 and verse 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 13. Uh-huh. Love not sleep. Love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Lest thou come to poverty. Now, remember what we just read. S sleep is sweet to a laboring man. That means that the moderate kind of sleep. Now, what uh, Solomon is talking about here is an overabundance of sleep. You know you're supposed to get up 7 o'clock, but you want to wait. You got, you got the alarm clock. And you know what? You're going to tell how lazy brother is. You know you got to get up at 7. You got the phone or the alarm clock right next to your bed so you can hit, do what? Hit the snooze button. I'm going to just get five more minutes. No, that's signs of laziness. How about you put that, that alarm on the other side of the room? So that way when it goes off, you got to get up and walk all the way over there to cut it off. Now you know you're up already. There's an, a thought, right? Hmm, things that make you go, hmm... What are you gonna say? Bishop, there's, a, there's an alarm clock that, have, that got wheels on it. Oh, yeah. And as soon as it goes off, it'll roll on the floor and it'll keep, and, and as, as it rolls, it gets louder. Damn. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> Read that thing again. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. You sleep too much, you're going to be poor. Brother, I'm looking for a job. The wife said he's a, he's a, the wife said the devil's a lie. He ain't looking for nothing. He's going to argue in front of us. To buy, I am looking for a job. How do you know I'm looking for a job? She said, what time is it when you go out looking for work? He says, 11 o'clock. She said, what kind of job interview are you going on? You're supposed to get up early. Don't, what is that expression? The early bird gets the worm. You ain't get, wake up at 11 o'clock talking about I'm going to go out looking for a job. No, you're fooling yourself and trying to fool everybody around you. Women know, though. Sisters know. He's full of it. Give me uh, Proverbs 6 and 4. And we're going to read down to 11. Proverbs 6, we're going to start at verse 4. So we're talking about sleep. Eight hours for sleep. Don't forget this. Remember, there's 24 hours in a day. Eight hours for sleep, eight hours for work, and eight hours for God. So right now, we're talking about sleep. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 4. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber. You know what slumber is that over excessive sleep? The kind when you got the boogers in your eyes, you're waking up, and it's all stringy and nasty in there. Then you're rolling your fingers around. That's nasty. So Solomon's talking about oversleeping here. Go ahead. Deliver thyself as a roe. Deliver, a roe is a deer. Deliver thyself as a deer from the hand of the hunter. From the hand. You act like you're a deer and a hunter's after you. Go ahead. And as a bird from the hand of a fowler. Solomon is telling us, act like you're a bird and you're trying to deliver yourself from the hand of a fowler, which is a bird catcher. Watch this. Go to the, out, go to the ant, thou slugger. Now he's calling us sluggers. He says, go to the ant, thou slug. Mean examine an ant's life. Go ahead. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider an ant's ways and be wise. Go ahead. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. He said an ant does not have a guide, an overseer, or a ruler to say, hey, do this or do that. Ants don't have that in their colonies. Go ahead. Provided her meat in the summer. An ant works all throughout the summer. You see ants going places, 
dragging potato chips, dragging uh, little ants, dragging all kind of stuff into the laboro all throughout the summer. Go ahead. And gathereth her food in the harvest. And gathers her food in the harvest. Watch this. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? No, he's comparing it with us. He's calling us sluggards. Why? Because with us, not being wise, we got somebody, we need somebody to tell us, Tyrone, wake up. Go look for a job. Go do this. That's not how you tie a tie. Do this. Dress like this. Don't wear your hair like that on the interview. You always need somebody to do this. Do that. We need a guide. But Solomon says ants don't need that. So he's telling us to be wise and observe the life of an ant. Read that again. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Uh -huh. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Wake up. Come up. Yet a little sleep. Yet a little sleep. A little slumber. A little slumber. That's when that, that snooze alarm. You hit the snooze button. Go ahead. A little folding of the hands to sleep. What happens? So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So it's saying your poverty shall surely come. That's what he's saying. He said you don't want to check out an ant's life. He said y'all grown adults. He said your poverty will come like a traveling man's going to a destination or like somebody robbing you. Because you're going to lose your money. Whatever you got, you're going to lose it. Read on. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. Well, that was it. That's all I want from that. Watch this. Yes. Because um, it mentioned the deer. I looked it up. It says uh, deer, gen, uh, the cycle of, of the, their sleep cycle. A typical sleep bout including, uh, includes 30 seconds to a few minutes of dozing. Then it says generally once per tw per 30 minutes, deer will stand and stretch. Um, and this 30 minute cycle of rest and standing has also been reported in the, liter in the literature for axis deer. It also says whether dozing or sleeping with eyes open or closed, mm. deer are continually monitoring what is going on around them. Right. Their ears are never lowered, and they wake up instantly. See that? So Solomon, in his wisdom, was comparing us, telling us, look at a deer, look at an ant, look at a bird. Check them out. Examine it. And we're supposed to be wiser than those creatures. Okay, now watch this. Give me 2 Thessalonians 3. So we discussed eight hours for sleep. So we discussed sleep is good, but too much sleep is not good, brothers, sisters. Too much sleep is not good. Now we're going to discuss eight hours for work. So eight hours for sleep, that's done. Now we're going to talk about work. Eight hours for work. 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 and 11. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If any would not work, neither should he eat. That's somebody who doesn't want to work. Now let me explain something. This is not talking about a brother who's well off. This is not talking about a brother who is wealthy. This is not talking about a brother. Let's say you get a huge pension and you, your money is good. It ain't talking about. This is says any that would not work. This is somebody able-bodied, needs money, but refuses to work. Everybody understand the difference? Okay, read that again. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you. I remember when we was in one school, brother, this one brother, he had this particular job. The dude was almost, he was almost like a millionaire. You know who I'm talking about. Remember Light Skin Brother? He did the, uh, this, the um, motivational teachings. He's, that was his job back in the day. So, a huge house. Brothers are yelling at him, talking about why don't he go out and get a job. I said, you know, this, this, how much money this dude got in the bank? I said, if you Google his name, I said, he pop up all that motivation. I ain't going to give you his name, but all kind of motivational things. He would sell videos of him doing motivational speaking for like $2,000. And he would sell like 20 of them. You do the math on that in one month. Just do the math. You'd be like, what? So brothers is arguing, why did he get a job? Bro, be quiet. Just be quiet. He ain't got his hand out. All his bills is paid. He got two, three homes. Shut the hell up. Mind your business. And the same brother complaining is 2 Thessalonians 3. And to read that again. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Go ahead. 
For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. And it's always those disorderly brothers that got so much to say. Bruh, this dude's minding his business. He's doing his work. What are you doing? You in his business. Read that again. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Meaning they're busy in everybody's business but their own. Be mindful of those spirits. Be very mindful. Ephesians 4.28, please. Ephesians 4.28. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 28. This is for you brothers that come out of the street life. Go ahead. Let him that stole steal no more. So, because the law says thou shalt not steal. Let him that stole steal no more. The repentance is open for you. Go ahead. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. Nobody don't like these scriptures. I don't, li I don't, I don't like these scriptures. I tell you, you be, t you be telling the truth too much. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you went to jail for a year. Why? Embezzlement. Fraud. I was robbing people. I was a stick-up kid. Read that again. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. Why? That he may have to give to him that needeth. So when you come into this truth, you find out there's a purpose behind work. That you, not only to take care of yourself, of course, that's a given. But that you may have to give to him that needs. Because there'll be brothers and sisters that come in behind you who need that help. Who need assistance. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Because we're all falling on hard times one time or another. And especially when you got people on the street that deal drugs, one of the questions is, what y'all going to do for me if I stop selling drugs, if I stop being a stick-up kid, what y'all got for me? Okay, all we can give you right now initially is the word of the most high. You, we can help you a little bit, but at the end, you got to be able to stand up on your own two feet legally, under working with your hands and helping those that need. You got to see the law, the long picture. All right, Sirach 29, watch this. Sirach 29 and verse 20. Help, help him that needeth. So what about if something go bad? Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 29, verse 20. Help thy neighbor according to thy power. So it's good to help your neighbor. According to your power, according as you are able, help your neighbor. Go ahead. And beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. You hear that? It says, and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. You got a brother. He got $5. He going to come to me and say, I need $5 to get home. I said, don't you work? I said, what would you do with your money? He said, I gave it to uh, my last $5 to brother so-and-so. I said, bro, so you gave your last money to get you home to brother so-and-so who want McDonald's. Now you can't get home. He goes, yeah. I said, you simple as hell. That's just dumb. Read it again. Help thy neighbor according to thy power, and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. Right, now you're in the same boat he was in, broke. You got nothing because you thought it was a good deed. What would Jesus do? I'm going to give my last dollar to this dude. Now, I got nothing. You're simple. That's not the scriptures. Teachers don't do that. Everybody understand that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got another story. Here we are. This is uh, the last school. Brother comes in. Brother would always travel from Boston to come down to New York. This is not in, this, not in the IUIC. It was another school. And he had four children. He was on public assistance because he was legally blind. So he would get, um, what's that check called? The SSI check. So one day he says, he comes in and he says, hey, I need, I need help. I need food for the kids. So, you know, I'm inquisitive. I said, okay, but I thought you get SSI. He says, yeah, I do. He says, I get a big check and I fill up my fridge for my family every month. So I said, what happened to, your, to the, the food then? He said, this dude from Boston would come down every month Stay with me and eat us at a house and home. I said, bro, why did you let this dude... So I called a brother in the room. Why would you come down? So I was talking to the brother, the blind brother. Why would you allow this dude to come down to your house with you, your wife, and kids and eat all your food? He said, it's not Christ-like to say no. 
I said, what, wait a minute. Can somebody read that scripture again? Read verse 20 one more, one more again. Sirach 29, verse 20. Help thy neighbor according to thy power, and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. So I said, now you got no food in the house. Your kids is crying. Your wife is calling you nigga because she's saying you stupid. And you saying, what would Jesus do? What the hell is this? It is Christ-like to say no. Y'all everybody know that, right? No. Remember there was a dude that asked Christ, can I follow you? He said no. He said, go tell what happened. Remember the legion, dude had legions. He said, you can't follow me. You just go tell him, because he didn't want crazy people around him. You just go uh, <laughs> tell people what I did for you. It is Christ-like to say no. Then you got the sister. I ain't going to call her now because she's still with us. Simple as hell. There's one sister jumped from house to house to house. She knows she ain't had good sexual relations with her husband in months. This sister over here going to say, can I stay with y'all? And she says, what would Jesus do? Sure, you can stay with us. Now, this sister, the wife go out to work. This sister who's not working is in the house with her husband who works late at night. No, mid, mid after, late, night, late afternoon. He come home, and she wake up in the bed, the wife, and she's like this. Look, the husband ain't in the bed. She gets up. She hear grunting downstairs. He's with the young girl. What would Jesus do? Sister, sometime it is God-like to say no. You can tell no to a sister. No, you can't stay with me. Me and my husband ain't having good sexual relations. You ain't walking around here with your uh, self, you know. Coming out the shower, talking about, oh, I didn't know you were still here. Yeah, right. You knew I was still here. You knew I was here. Oh, 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 where else I will be? Right. <laughs> this is my home. <laughs> exactly. Give me Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. So I ain't going to give you what you want to hear. I'm going to give you what you need to hear. Everybody understand that? Uh-huh. We're going to see. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17. You know, after the past five classes on marriage, we must have had like five divorces. People, women walked out. Men and women, I'm tired of this hoe. Just leave. He said, everything you described was my marriage. I can't take it no more. I'm sick of this. I said, well, the purpose of the class wasn't to destroy the marriage. It was to build a marriage. You simple people. Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. For example, work. Once you come into this truth, you know that there's a purpose behind work that was ordained from Genesis. And when you come in this truth, you know you might have been a stick-up boy. You might have dealt with fraud. Now you, you say, you know what? Let me work and let me help my neighbor according to my power. You see the bigger picture for the work that you do. All right, let me help. I can help now keep the school open uh, five, six days out of the week, seven days out of the week. Why? Because the money that I'm making now, I can help. I can help provide for my family now. Everybody understand that? So read that again. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Why? Because you have a spirit, your spiritual eyes open now. I understand why we have to work as men. I understand from the time of Adam, it was ordained work. Now I understand the purpose behind the work. Yes, it was a result of us sinning, but now I used to be a stick-up kid or whatever. Now I can help my brother. I can help my neighbor. I can help my sister. I can help the nation grow. Okay, jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Because sometimes you get a job, you can't stand the job. You hate your boss. You can't stand what you do. But you know, it's a temporary, what's the term? It's a temporary uh, stepping stone to where you want to get to. So you, once you have that spiritual eye open, read that again. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm trying to get to point C. I'm at point B right now, and I can't stand point B in my life, okay? Like when you're trying to fix your credit, and you know you might have to take a, a, a little extra job somewhere to fix this thing up. You got a student loan. You know you don't want to pay that thing back. But, you know, the scripture says, oh, no man, anything. You meditate on that. Oh, a whole lot of people. 
I'm like, dang, but I want to get this. My wife, we in a uh, one-bedroom apartment. I got three kids. She upset all the time. She want a house, but our credit's jacked up. My credit bad, my wife credit bad. I've been through that. So I said, you know what? We're going to have to suffer for a couple of years. You got bad credit, I got bad credit. You make $5 an hour, I make $5 an hour. Together we got 10 bucks. We got to save $2 on the side. Let's fix this thing. Struggle, struggle, struggle. You know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. You, yeah. Anyway, and you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you don't know how people got to where they got. You're looking at the, the, the situation now. You're looking at the situation now, but you don't know where they come from, where they've been through. You think people was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Is that the expression? Yeah, that's right. We ain't born but Very few of us, maybe one or two of y'all, born with a silver spoon. Most of us, oh, hell no. We come from the dilapidated state. Y'all come to my house. I got the pictures of my family in North Carolina. People be coming and say, who's those slaves? You got, I said, that's my family. <laughs> so that's not, those are my family right there. That's how we live back, back in the... You know what I'm talking about, my house. You see them pictures, right? Who those slaves right there? Uh, yeah, Bishop, I'm glad you say that. Because you keep talking about Levi all the time. I'm glad you say that. <laughs> so read that again. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Right, so you know you got a boss, you can't stand his guts. But you know you're doing it as unto the Lord, because why? You have a purpose now. So you're going to endure that until the Lord opens up another door. You think Joseph liked working for Pharaoh? He couldn't stand Pharaoh. What's the dude's name? Potiphar. Joseph didn't like this dude, but he did it as unto the Lord. The history that we read, you think Daniel loved serving the king of Babylon? He didn't like that. But he, hey, I'm here. I got to deal with this. This is the lot I've been given. So when we read that history, we should relate it to ourselves today. I can't stand my boss, but I, I, I know me and my wife, we want to get over there. We want to live in that part of town, and we want to live in that type of a house. So we got to endure this crap we're going through right now. Yeah, when you're talking about Daniel, he understand that his, his purpose was to help his people. Mm -hmm. He didn't care how hard the job was. He didn't care. Uh, he didn't give a damn about these nations. But he said, you know what? The position I've been putting on is to help my people, mm -hmm. to help my people. But exactly. a lot of brothers, they don't think like that. Get that in Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 12. For wisdom is a defense. Yeah, we love wisdom, brothers. I want knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It's a defense. When you know who you are, where you came from, where you're going, that's wisdom. That's good. Watch the next part. And money is a defense. The Bible comes, why? Because money you need in, in this life. Money's a defense from what? Poverty. So the Bible talks about money. That's where work comes in. That's where your skills come in. That's where investments come in. It's all throughout the Bible, but wisdom comes first. Okay? Like we saw the video last week with, uh, what's that rapper's name? With all the tattoos. He was cursing a girl out. Soldier Boy. A millionaire. And crazy as hell. All that money. Now, he don't have that first part that says wisdom is defense. He has no wisdom. But he has the money part. The money's a defense from poverty. Yeah, you remember the boy, your homeboy said, the guy who was uh, watching over him, he said, he's witch. Right. <laughs> that woman said, he's crazy though. He said, he's witch, he's the boss. <laughs> he's, the boss. <laughs> he's, a, he's a crazy boss. So read that again. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the, ex but the excellency of knowledge but is... But the excellency of knowledge is... That wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Wisdom gives life to them that have it. Why? Because with wisdom, you're able to deal with your life, where you want to go, your goals, your interests. You're able to deal with these things. Without wisdom, all that money you got, you end up just like a soldier boy. Crazy as hell. Can't keep a, wife, a, wolf, a, a, wolf, a wife around. <laughs> Can't keep her. I was right the first time. Damn. Can't keep her around. They say, like Laba said, the, the dude said, but he's a boss. He's rich. She's like, so? But he's crazy. Nobody wants to sit around and go, a rich, crazy person. Watch this. Proverbs 10 and 4. 
So we're still talking about eight hours for work. Eight hours for work. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10 and verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. So whatever you do, whatever your occupation right now, if you slack in it, it says you're going to become poor. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. We want to be diligent in this work. And remember, when, I, when we discuss work, we can talk about work on the carnal level, carnal level, but you can also, when Solomon wrote these things, it also had a, a twofold meaning, a spiritual level. Because we work in this truth. If you're slacking this truth, this will fall. What y'all, this school you got set up, it'll fall apart. We're going to touch on that a little bit if you slack. And it's the same way in your personal life. You work, you slack. What happens? You slack at work. What your boss do? If you get fired. Even if you're an entrepreneur, brothers, I'm an entrepreneur, sister, I'm an entrepreneur. If you're a slack entrepreneur, it leads to poverty. It leads to poverty. Okay? Watch this. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever thine hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Read it again. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with thy might. Go ahead. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whether thou goest. He's, Solomon is saying we're all going to die, so whatever you do while you're alive, do it with your might. Don't be slack. Don't half-ass it. Do it. Do the work. Okay? Why? Because you have a goal in your life. You're trying to get somewhere. You're trying to accomplish something. So Solomon was saying here, do it with your might. Don't, don't slack. Okay? Give me Sirach 38. Is there such a thing as too much work? Oh, yeah. Too much work in this world is not good. Sirach talked about that. Ecclesiasticus 38. And we're going to start at verse 31. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 31. All these trust to their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. So it's talking about work. Watch this. Without these cities cannot, without these cannot a city be inhabited. Without people working, a city cannot be inhabited. You need, you need electricians. You need street makers. Uh, uh, you need people to deal with the water. You need carpenters. You need all these things for a city to be inhabited. It said, without these cannot a city be inhabited. Read. And they shall not dwell where they will nor go up and down. Go ahead. They shall not be sought for in public counsel. Why? Nor because they give their life to their work. You ever see these people that work, work, work? We were talking about that this morning, I thought. You have people that work, they've been there, what, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Right, they die on a job. That's all their whole life. Work, work, work. We're not to be like that. Read that part again. They shall not be sought for in public counsel nor sit high in the congregation. We got brothers who can't break down John 3, 16, but they could tell you all about their job. You know what I'm talking about, right, Lava? Yes, Don, you know what I'm talking about? They could tell you, we got brother. Well, I ain't going to say what. Y'all going to figure it out if I ain't going to say too much. But you got brothers that could break down a computer, put it back together, but they can't explain John 3, 16. My job, my job. We be sitting out talking about scriptures. Their conversation will always lead back to their job. We don't give a damn about your job. <laughs> Read that again. They shall not be sought for in public council, mm -hmm. nor sit high in the congregation. Right, that's why they don't go no further than a soldier. They've been, you've been with us eight years, you still a soldier? Go ahead. They shall not sit on the judge's seat. Right, when it comes time to counsel, we don't ask these dudes to sit in there. Go ahead nor understand the sentence of judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's why they always confuse. Why, why was that, pat, that law passed like that? I don't understand. I'm confused. That's because you don't study. Right. Your whole life is your job, your job, your job. There must be a balance to this thing. Go ahead. They cannot declare justice and judgment. They can't explain nothing. Go ahead. 
and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. Right, we be going through parables. The brothers got, I got up and go. I got to leave. Why? Because you have your spirit don't fit with when we going over scriptures. Some brothers we find are just there for the woman. They they they're just trying to get her over there. So they sit here, and you sisters be singing them. Brother been here for years. He ain't never move up in nothing. He's just here for the cookies. And I'm talking, when I say cookies, I'm talking about you women over there. Go ahead. But they will maintain the state of the world. Their whole objective, their life is about maintaining America. I just live to maintain America. They will never say that, but you can tell by their life. I just live to support America. Go ahead. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. All their desire is in the work of their craft. So, just work, work, work. You are no good to God. He can't use you because you're too occupied. Okay? So, we got to organize our time and prioritize our work. And we got to ask the Lord regarding our personal lives, our married lives, to remove that lazy spirit that's on us. Okay? I'm going to show you that too. We need the Lord to remove that lazy spirit. Proverbs 14, 23. And you got brothers and sisters that talk a good talk. They could, they could tell you what they want to do, but they never make steps to what they want to do in this life, in this truth or in this life. But they talk good. Read that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of lips tendeth only to penury. Read that again. In all labor, there is profit. In all the work that you do, whether spiritual or carnal in this world, it's profitable. Go ahead. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Penury means poverty. If you just talk about something and you never put a hand, foot to the pedal, hand to the plow, it leads to poverty. You just talk. You've been talking about you want to uh, be an entrepreneur for the past 10 years, girl. Stop it. Just stop. You ain't ever going to do nothing. Ten years you've been talking about this thing and you ain't, do, you ain't start nothing yet. Well, um, what about she already 65? Yeah, she's 65. She's still talking about it. It's like, stop. You're never going to do nothing. Brothers be the same way. I heard one brother talking about, yeah, the black man needs to uh, start uh, making his own cars. Remember that brother? Uh, what's the, the fat rapper? Uh, dark skinned dude. He was on uh, HBO. He had a thing about there was no black Thing. He said, whatever's not black made, kill a mic, kill a mic, kill a mic, kill a mic. There was a guy that he said, there's no black automobile company. So in relation to that, there was a radio show where a brother called in and said, yeah, we need to start making our own vehicles. He said, uh, I've been making my own vehicle for the past five years. And a, and a radio has, host said, yeah, did you finish yet? He said, I didn't even start. He just hung up the phone and said, hang up on this dude. People just talk a good talk, but they never begin to do nothing. It's just talk. It's a scam. Don't fall for it. Give me Proverbs 24 and 30. Yeah, but the car is inside his head. It's in his <laughs> head. It's in his head. The car's in my head. I didn't start it yet. I talk a good talk, though. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. You're in 24 and 30. Read that again. I went by the field of the slothful. The word slothful means the lazy, the sluggers. I went by the field of the slothful. Go ahead. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And I went by the vineyard of the man that was void of understanding. Watch what he saw. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nittles and covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. You ever go by somebody's house and the grass ain't cut? You got vines all over the place. And you could tell that person is lazy as hell. That's why Esau, when, when black people move in the neighborhood, Esau be quick to leave. And you want to ask, why are they leaving? Because they say black people don't cut their lawn. And if you Chicano, Mexican, you're going to have cars parked all on the lawn. You don't know how to take care of stuff. That's what you hear in the world. Read that again from verse, uh, verse you started at, 30. Verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nittles, and covered the face thereof. 
and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Yeah, the stone, the wall been broke down for years. Ain't nobody put mortar to nothing to try to fix the wall. You got holes all in the walls, and it's been like that for years. And you can tell that person is lazy. This is what Solomon's talking about. Come on. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Notice what he says. Then I saw it and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. So he, he goes by. He sees this house of grass ain't cut. The wall been broke down for years. He ain't taking care of his property. Okay, he said, I looked at it and I considered it. And I learned instructions from just looking at it. Go ahead. Yet a little sleep. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. What happens? So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. That's that brother or sister. That sister, I'll cut the grass tomorrow. I'll paint tomorrow. Guess what? Tomorrow comes and goes. So Solomon said, look at these things and consider this is why, like, in every IUIC school, we have a, what's called a deep clean. Do I have a deep clean here? Why? Why do you need a deep clean? Because black people tend to get nasty. I'm, I'm just telling you straight. If there's a handprint on the wall, you come back to in the school, the handprint's still there. Hey, I was here last month, and that same handprint is still on the wall. You don't want that. People come in, the bathroom's dirty. People, these people don't care about nothing. So in our instructions from what we're reading, we're to learn not to be slothful, not to be lazy, to take care of what's our own. Everybody understand that? I know my, some of y'all are like, no, I don't get it. The white man's the devil. Yeah, he is. But we ain't talking about that today. We're not talking about that today. <laughs> Walking with the giants. We ain't talking about that. We're not talking about that. Give me Ecclesiastes 10.18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. Wait, it might be Ecclesiastes. Let me see. This is yeah, it's in Ecclesiastes. You're right. Thank Ecclesi you. Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. By, if y'all brothers and sisters are lazy concerning this place here, by much slothfulness, the building decays. Go ahead. And through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. And by idleness of the hand, the house drops through. That goes through for your own personal place where you live. And it goes for the sanctuary right here. You must keep it clean. You must keep it going. Everybody understand that? Mm, we're going to find out in a couple of months when I come back. Lava, you see that handprint on the wall over there? We're going to look to see if it's still there. Okay. <laughs> Yaki. Yaki, you heard that. That's Yari. That's Yari. Yaki, Yari, the same thing, doesn't it? Same matter? thing. We, hey, we got to remember that everything that we see in this life is going to burn. This, it does not stay forever. Once you got that in your mind, that we are here temporary, we're here as pilgrims upon the earth, this is all going to go, just take care of what is ours. Okay, watch this. Give me uh, 2 Peter 3, 10 and 11. 2 Peter 3, verse 10 and 11. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Meaning, unawares, you ain't going to know when it comes. Just like you know when a thief is coming, Christ said, I'm going to be like that thief. Go ahead. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Right. Boom. Thermonuclear destruction. Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's going to be America. Go ahead. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's everything we see in this current life is going to be burned up, destroyed. That don't mean, well, hey, then I ain't got to work. I, no, that's stupid. You got to, you got to, give me that scripture and uh, just popped in my head. Give me the holiest one. Give me the one that's, I think, Jeremiah 29. I'm about build ye houses, that one. Find me that. You in captivity... You cannot have the mindset, the Negro Latino mindset, it's going, all going to be destroyed anyway. I don't got to do nothing. That's not what the scriptures say. You got it? Where are we going? Jeremiah 29, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses. Do what? 
Build ye houses. So we were in Babylon for 70 years, only 70 years, and God said, build you houses. Within those 70 years, build them. We've been in this daggone country almost 400 years. Northern Kingdom been here over 500 since Esau came. Read that again. Build ye what? Build ye houses uh -huh. and dwell in them. Read. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. You see that? So there's no thought where it says, because you're in captivity to hell with everything. That was only 70 years. He said, build houses, have gardens, get married, have kids. So m more so now, in this day and age. What are you going to say, Lava? But that's a lazy brother. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, he's not about nothing, man. This guy is lazy. He's about nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Give me, go back to 2 Peter 3 and 10. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's why if you just give yourself to work, 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 without understanding the spiritual aspect and reasoning behind it, all that work's going up in smoke. Okay, you got to have a divine purpose. What is my purpose here? Why am I working? You got to understand that. Because that's not going to go. The reasoning, the understanding, go ahead. Saying then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You see that? We got to have that understanding. People in the world don't have this understanding. All that work you're doing is going to evaporate. It's going to be destroyed. We know that. So what manner of people are we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Conduct ourselves right. Speak right. Have a purpose. Gather the people together. Because we know this whole thing is going to go up in smoke. Okay? Give me um, 1 Corinthians 7. As bad, as bad as the lazy and sleepy... What's the word? Another word? What's the word with the P? Lazy, sleepy, uh, uh, procrastinator. You're pro is that a word? I didn't make that word up. That is a real word. You're a procrastinator. That's a black people word. That ain't black people. We just say lazy. White folks be saying, you're a procrastinator. What do I mean? Well, lazy. Lazy behind you. Put things off from day to day. I find that... Those spirits who are procrastinating spirits, they put off from day to day, which is another word for lazy. You find that distractions is by far one of the worst type of uh, time-wasted behavior. Procrastination is time-wasted behavior. Everybody understand what I mean by that? When, I'm going to say it again. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? When you procrastinate... That is time-wasted behavior. Let me give you an example of uh, time-wasted behavior. You ever come home from work or you wake up in the morning and you find yourself on the, the internet for an hour, two hours on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. So that's time-wasted behavior. Cause you f women know what I'm talking about because they are all... I wake up, my wife is on Facebook. What the hell are you on Facebook again? Get off of Facebook. You're always on there. Get off. It's time-wasted behavior. Why? Because you're not doing nothing. I'm like, it's different if you are, let's say you're an entrepreneur. You make uh, this, this water, whatever. Yeah, that's how you market your yes. products. That's not what we're talking about, though. You are promoting your business. That's different. We're not talking about that. With time wasted behavior is you have nothing to do. I'm just reading everybody's posts. Oh, 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 look at this. Look, look, I like this. You like that? Like, 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 like. One hour go by, two hour go by, three, and you have accomplished nothing. And you're an entrepreneur. You, you know, that's time wasted behavior. That is procrastination. Another thing, TV. TV. I find I'll be trying to put a class together and I will have the TV on. And I'm distracted. I will stop. 10 minutes go by, I'm looking at TV. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. An hour go by and I'm like, I have not written nothing. Cut that damn TV off. It's time-wasted behavior. 
Uh, that women know we know talking about Atlanta housewives, yeah. boot camp marriages, uh, medical doctors' wives. All these, these. Uh, oh, they got this new one. Uh, with you know the ba- the the Bachelorette, the stupidest show I've ever seen. They had the one, the recent one. I'm flipping some channel surfing. The black, the white woman goes into the room with all the men. She said, "I'm gonna give everybody a chance." So the first guy she goes to give a chance is a brother. And he's outside jumping up and down like a schoolgirl. I'm so happy she picked me. I'm so. And I was like, what the hell is this? And I just cut it off. I got someone. I said, click. Some people will sit there and watch that foolishness. Hey, Bishop. So, yes. The internet now, with their algorithms, you'll watch a video on Facebook, and then the next video is recommended. And they start to get an idea of what you like to watch. And then before you know it, like an hour went by, and you just watch all types of foolish videos, all types of foolishness, and everything like that. And you're like, oh, wait a second. It just is designed to keep your eyes on the screen. Exactly. It's, it's a bewitching. Yep. Time wasted behavior. You brother, video games. Grow, some of y'all, 30 years old, still video games in a barbershop at home. You got your son a video game. I got a video game. We're playing video games. Time wasted behavior. Here's the next one. Well, you're all going to relate to this one, you brothers. Porn. Time wasted behavior. You got the woman right there, but you don't want to look at her. You look, you're looking at uh, 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 Betty. Betty with the, what's that? Betty. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Something Betty. Anyway, so it's all time wasted behavior. It's ridiculous. Not only is it fornication, you're wasting your life sitting there. One hour go by, two hours go by. The sister last week, they got mad at me because she said, me and my husband, no, what did she say? My husband watched porn. Y'all remember that I read the email? She's mad as hell. I, I, to this day, I don't know her name. I just saw the email, and I told my wife to take the name off, so I don't know. So I don't know the sister. I don't know who it was. I purposely say, I don't want to know the name, so I'm not biased or anything. So she's going to send an email. Mad as hell. You don't know that me and my husband haven't had sex in nine months because this dude won't stay off porn. So I wrote back, well, sister, it's not that it's not. What did I say? I said, sometimes you got to ask the right questions. It's not that your husband watches porn that he's not, he don't want to deal with you. It's what kind of porn he watch. He watch. See, I just went over a lot of their heads. They're like, I'm confused. I don't understand that. There's, a, there's something in what I just said that. If you got the spirit, you know what I'm talking about. Why he look at porn and could care less about the wife who's laying right next to him. And she ain't sloppy, out of shape. He just don't want her. So anybody see that movie? Uh, it's a series on Netflix called Greenleaf. Oh, there was a scene. The wife goes, oh, you my best friend. He says, oh, you my best friend. BFF, husband and wife. And he's like, yeah, baby. He's on the damn freaking gay chats and all this other stuff. He didn't want her. So sometimes it's not, well, you got to ask the right questions. What kind is it that you're looking at? Everybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. All righty then. Give me 1 Corinthians 7. We're talking about uh, procrastination. Distractions. Things that distract you. When you're lazy... When you are a sluggard, sometimes it ain't so much to sleep, it's that you're distracted. So read that scripture for me. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 35. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, and verse 35. And this I speak for your own profits, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. That we may attend upon the Lord without distraction. We come in this truth. We want to study. I want to do my four chapters a day. I want to go to the men's of valor. I want to go out to camp. I want to do this. I want to do that. But we find ourselves more times or less distracted. Distracted by what? Social media, TV, porn, whatever it is, we are distracted. And that's what it's designed to distract us from what we, from our day-to-day dealings that we need to do. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I was watching this, uh, this white boy. He, was, he makes sense what he's saying. He's saying that a lot of times we're not focused 
then time passes us by. Mm -hmm. It passed so fast. It said when you, like I was saying this morning, I was saying that every day you have to wake up, make a new world for you. You understand? Create a new world that you know that what you expect is going to come out of it. You understand? But if you just waste times, every day is the same thing. So that means you have not changed. 20 years, you're still the same. Still doing the same things. You, you just, we were just, just like a tip. You just put, we wine. That's it. But still remain the same. Right. That's what the white boy said. I said, you just do the same thing every day. That means that you don't go nowhere. You don't use your brand. You don't use nothing. Mm -hmm. So I had made a statement at the beginning of today's lesson. I said that there's 24 hours in the day. How do you know there's 24 hours in the day? Give me that in John 11, verse 9 and 10. Christ said there's 24 hours in a day. This is how we know. The book of St. John, chapter 11 and verse 9. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? So there's 12 hours in the daytime. From sun up to sundown, there's 12 hours. Go ahead. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Christ is referring to himself. He's the light of the world. This whole thing is an allegory. It's literal, but it's an allegory as well. Go ahead. Meaning similar to. Go ahead. But if a man walk in the night, he's So how many stumbled. hours do you think is in the night? If there's 12 hours during the day, how many hours in the night? 12. That's 24. Go ahead. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. He's using an allegory referring to sin, wickedness. Okay. So 12 hours in the day, and now we know based upon this that there's also 12 hours in the evening. So I made it simple for us. You got eight hours of sleep. You got eight hours to work your nine to five, and the last eight hours, because eight times three is what? Dax, some brothers didn't answer. They don't know. Eight times three is 24. Eight, eight, eight. Yeah, but Bishop, even though they're eight hours, he's really 10 hours. Mm -hmm. working. By I know, time I'm being you generous. Home, by yes. the time you get home, he's really 10 hours. You work. Exactly. So the last eight hours, eight hours of sleep, eight hours to work your nine to five, and the last eight hours, which are the most important, are uh, for God. Write this down. The last eight hours are for God, family, and health. Now, I broke those three up on purpose. I could have just said God and make it uh, generic, but I wanted to break it down. God, family, and health. <laughs> See, I told you I was start getting the health thing, right? Woo, y'all thought I was playing about that. Uh-oh. He said health. We're going to start with God first. Now, all, all three that I mentioned goes back to the book of life. Everything we mentioned thus far is in the Bible. So I just want to break down these last eight hours for God, family, and health. Let's open up with Matthew 6, verse 33. So you got your eight hours of sleep. You got your eight hours of work for the white man. Now you got eight more hours that you need to prioritize and organize so i'm gonna start with god first read that saint matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you you see that read that again but seek ye first the kingdom of god seek ye first the kingdom of god a lot of times brothers and sisters come in the truth and they want a job first we got uh, crack boys on the street. They want to come in. We get them from selling crack or whatever. They want a job. No, no, no. The scriptures say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You got to learn first, okay? You ever, you ever offer somebody a job or give them your name as a, what's the term? As a reference and they ain't no damn good? Oh, I'll never do that again. I did that. that the, the, the boss says to me, this is years ago, he says, hey, you Israelites seem like y'all some decent people. I said, we are. He says, okay, I need somebody to do security for me. He says, let me know if they got a record. He said, if they've been arrested, it's okay. Just let me know. So that way I ain't got to waste some money putting their fingerprint through the FBI data. You know, you're supposed to get fingerprinted. So I'm talking to the brother. He need a job. I said, hey, come work as so-and-so. I know the, the manager there. I said, you ever been arrested? He said, no. I said, listen, if you have, he said, it's okay. He said, no, I've never been arrested. He goes down there. I don't hear nothing. Days ago, by I see the guy. I said, "Hey, did you uh, hire my boy?" He says, "Man, don't ever 
bring me none of you damn Israelites. I said, I, he said, I told you about if he got arrested, just have the dude let me know. The dude lied in my face. I put his name through, I spent money. Because you know the company got to spend money to do that. He said, I spent money. The dude's record came with a rap sheet. Blah, 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 blah. He said, I don't want none of you Israelites. Don't reference nobody to me. Man, I was so damn embarrassed. You know how to curse the brother out in the name of Jesus. I'm cursing you out. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Read that again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. A lot of times people say, what are y'all doing for the community? You ain't doing nothing for the community. Yes, we're doing a whole lot. The first thing we need to do for the community is change the minds of the people. It makes no sense we setting up jobs for thieves and liars. They're going to destroy everything. If the mind ain't changed, don't waste your time on them. Everybody understand that? Give me that 1 Corinthians 7, 29. God must come first. The change in your life must come first, whether you are an individual or whether you're married. So when you're married, the same thing occurs like Christ said here in Matthew 6, 33. Watch what Paul says. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they which have wives be as though they had none. Now that don't mean ignore your wife. That means what? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. That's all it's saying. That's why it says, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives, meaning you married brothers, be as though they had none. Meaning what? God comes first. The Lord comes first. You women understand that? Only three women understood that. Do you women understand that? It's no different than New York. Yeah, same in New York. Like, what the hell is this? The Lord comes first. Man was made to serve the Lord. Give me that same chapter. Find me the verse, first minute seven, verse eight and nine. Some marriages, y'all get it, you get it backwards. I mean, first Corinthians chapter 11, verse eight and nine. Sisters get married and she think you got married to her to serve her. Women like that are not ready to be married, brothers. Oh, we, let's get married. Your girl got me a good man. He going to serve me. That marriage going to fall apart. Unless you got a weak, weeble wobble man that yellow makes him sad. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. But the woman of the man. So Paul had to break it down. He said, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Man did not come from woman. Woman came from man. That's Adam and Eve history right there. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. He said the man was not created for the woman, meaning to serve her. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. Paul said the woman was made for the man. In today's society, especially Judah, you got it all backwards. With all your key sweats, your baby faces. Why does the American black man always sing praise to the woman? It's backwards. You don't read about that in scriptures with men glorifying women. You see that in America. You get the greatest singers when you read in the scriptures, the men, we glorified the Lord. When you read when the women glorified the man, David slays his thousands, 10,000, what does it say? Saul slays his thousands, David slayed his 10,000. The women honored the men, but today is backwards, ass backwards. You got men singing this way to the woman. Oh, baby, I love you. Oh, blah, 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 blah. The Lord is like, this whole thing is upside down. Upside down. Yeah, you're a Judah, uh, brother. Thank you, Lava. Make, Thank it you. Bad. Thank you. Make it bad for everybody else. Thank you, Lava. We appreciate you. <laughs> so, uh, give me that. Give me um, Isaiah 51. We're still dealing with God come first. Once you come into this truth, you got to understand the most high, his agenda come first. Isaiah 51 and verse 20. I ain't going to go over what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. And it, these precepts that you're given, you can crumble it up, throw it in the garbage and be the bum you was always meant to be. Or you can meditate on it and say, you know what? I'm lacking in this part, in this part too. Let me fix myself. Read that. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Notice what it says. Thy sons have fainted. Meaning what? They've lost consciousness. They don't know who they are. They don't know their purpose. 
Thy sons have fainted. Fainted from what? The truth. They hang on the corners of all the streets. Go ahead. As a wild bull in a net. And your sons, God says, are like wild bulls in a net. This whole American system is a net. Everything is designed to trap us. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Brothers get mad about the police. I, okay, let me tell you something about the police. They have a theory that, I'm going to use some colorful language. Uh, this is what they say in the academy, so y'all just listen. I'm just going to say it. Bullshit turns to big shit. I'm going to say it again. In the police academy, they teach you that bullshit turns to big shit. Now, you don't understand what it means by that. You'll be like, huh, I don't get it. I'm going to explain what it means. Tickets. We all hate getting tickets, right? Everybody hate getting tickets? Y'all hate getting tickets? Let me tell you something about getting tickets. Car stops. I'm talking car stops. You know, the, I'm not talking about the Sandra Blanza. I'm not talking about those... Uh, Outrageous things where people die. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about bull crap car stops. Do you know that seven out of ten car stops, well, I wouldn't put it that high. I'll say six out of ten car stops. You don't have your seatbelt. You got a phone in your hand. Your license plate is um, expired. They run your name. You never see the cop car to be driving behind you. While they're driving behind you, they're running your plate. Do, 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 do. Do criminals like driving cars? Yeah, criminals like driving cars. Hey, pull over, nigga. Whoop, whoop. And everybody's nervous. Oh! I'd be nervous, too, and I'd be like, well, I'm a cop. The hell is this? <laughs> what happens a lot of times, I'll say six out of ten. I remember I did a car stop. A guy and a girl driving by. Whoop. I'm behind him. I checked the plate. It was expired. Pull him over. There was a... Uh, uh, his license was expired, so, you know, you pull him out of the car. They got a Macy's bag in the back. In the bag, you got a 9 millimeter, a wig, two wigs, a brown wig and a yellow wig, and money. Hmm. Uh, hey, you separate the guy from the girl. What's that 9 millimeter for? <laughs> of course everybody getting cuffed up. What's the 9 millimeter for? Oh. Uh, it's, uh, we just, you know, we just play games. Oh, you just play games. You just rush for religion. Play. What's the wigs for and the mask? Uh, uh, of lo and behold, there was a robbery. Things like that happen. Or you never be on I-95. People be having, transporting drugs in the, the trunk of the car. Whoa, whoa. I hate car stops. But it, I, they got an expression. Bullshit turns to big shit. We may not like certain things, but Esau's theory is that criminals like cars, a lot of things go down from a car stop. So there's a reason, there's a reason behind the madness, although we don't like it. We don't like it. So, back to Isaiah 51. Now watch this. This is why I said all of that. I'm going back to the scripture here. Who was reading for me? Come on. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. So this is why I went to that. This whole system is a net. It's a trap. It's designed to entrap us, not entrap us for our righteous behavior. I'm going to say it again. This whole system is a trap. It's not designed for our righteous behavior. It's designed for our bad behavior. And it's designed that way, yes. Give me that about uh, what Prof Solomon said, don't give me poverty. It's in Proverbs. I can't remember where. Proverbs 30, is it? Esau knows this thing. That's why sometimes you got to sit down and examine the madness behind. Why is this system set up the way it is? You found it for me? Where are we going? Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Okay, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Watch this. I'm still dealing with Isaiah 51, 20. I didn't leave the thought. Go ahead. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Neither Give me neither poverty nor riches. Why? Feed me with food convenient for me, mm -hmm. lest I be full and deny thee. He said, if you give me too much, I'll be full and deny you. Guess what? God gave Solomon all kind of riches. And guess what Solomon ended up doing? Denying the Lord. Solomon started to set up false gods for all those wives he had. 
So what he's saying here happened to him. Watch this next part, though. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still. See that? Was that the whole verse? No, sir. And take the name of my God in vain. Lest I be poor and still. That's what I'm going to get to. Esau designs this system for our people to remain in a state of poverty. And it's purposely done. Everybody understand what I'm saying? It's not designed for us to become CEOs. It's not designed for us to learn to become entrepreneurs. We got to struggle to figure these things out. But the other nations is designed for them to, to be successful. It's all designed this way. There's a lot of red tape for us. You got a Chinese boy come just from China. He get a, a, a $2 million bank loan. No credit, nothing. But they have grants for uh, people that come from other countries. Okay? But with us, we got to jump through fire hoops. We got to bark, do backflips, and all this other stuff. It's designed that way. Read that part again. Watch this. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Lest I be poor and steal. I'm going to talk about the Italians for a second. We the Italians love to say, oh, we came over here. We had nothing. That's bull crap. During, uh, remember there was a prohibition in the 20s? Prohibition when they was doing the alcohol and all that. That was the Italians. They were setting up the casinos all throughout Vegas. and all. That was the Italians killing thousands upon thousands of people. And then Esau, the other Edomite, said, hey, 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 you're doing a lot of killing here. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put you in charge of the police force. That's what we're going to do for you. The Irish came over. Oh, we had nothing. That's a damn lie, too. They said, fire, you Irish, we're going to put you in charge of the fire department throughout the country. That's what they did. But with us, nothing. They said, well, what's going to, for the police and the fire, what's going to make sure money keeps coming in our communities? He said these black and Latino people, keep them poor. What's going to happen? They're going to steal. Because that's, that's what the scripture says. Let's not be poor and what? Steal. That's when you read about the history. Those of us who had lands and all that, they, made, they ran us off our lands. Okay? We had to run down to other parts of the country, poor as hell, leave all our wealth behind that we worked for years. They said they're going to steal. He said they're poor. Leave them just like that. This system's designed for them to steal. That's going to keep you Italians in business. The police is always going to have something to do. Guess what? They're going to be fires too. You Irish, you're going to have a job. Don't worry. We got you. They had a whole system. Now, go back to Isaiah 51. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. They hang on the heads of all the corners. Go ahead. As a wild bull in a net. They're like wild bulls in a net. This net is the system that's been created for our people. Watch this. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Our people are full of the fury of the Lord, which is what? De the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. We're filled with the fury of the Lord. And we don't understand, why is this happening to us? Why do we keep suffering in and out of jail? The only way I can make good money is by selling drugs. That's good money, quick money. But guess what? Who want to live like that? You're always looking over your shoulder. You're always looking over your shoulder. If you ain't looking out for the white man locking you up, you know your brother going to bust a cap in your head. And take your spot, take your money. Y'all you know what I'm talking about? Who want to live the hell like that? That's not life. But that's the way the system is set up. Read on. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. Go ahead. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. What verse you at? Verse 22. Uh-huh. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it So again. God promises that we will no more drink the cup of his fury, which is Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 60. Go ahead. But I will put into the hand of them that afflict thee. So the Lord says, don't worry. There's going to come a day when them curses of Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. The white man and all the other nations, they're going to fit Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. Go ahead. Which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. And this is what they say to us, bow down that they may walk over. This is spiritual. That's why it says, which have said to thy, what's that word? Bow soul. Down. Which have said to thy soul. So this is a mental game. 
There's a spiritual game which have said to your soul, bow down that we may go over. So they walk all over us. They ain't literally walking over us, but spiritually they are walking over, taking advantage of us. Go ahead. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. They said, and you Israelites, God says you've laid your bodies like the ground. Your sons that that fainted hanging out there, they're like wild bulls. And they lay their soul like the ground. People just walk all over them. Got Caesar Borgia, they took over your land, they took everything from us. Now watch this. Stay right there, jump to the next chapter. 52, verse 7 and 8. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Stop. Verse 7. Remember what verse 20 said, 51, 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets, right? What I want, 52 and 1. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Now look at the bottom of 23. Bow down that we may go over. Thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So we're down in the dirt, right? Everybody see that, right? Look at 52 and 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee. The uncircumcised and the unclean. Meaning the other nations. Watch this. Shake thyself from the dust. Why does God say shake yourself from the dust? Because in the chapter above it, he said you have laid your body as the ground. Your soul is in the ground. Now he's saying wake up, awake, and shake yourself from all that confusion. That net, like when you see a bull, they'll put a net over a bull and they'll... Um, um, Hammer it down to the ground to make sure the bull can't rise up again. This is what they do. So now the Lord's saying to us, wake up, shake yourself from the ground, get up. That's what the Lord, and this is what we're doing now. Read that again. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Arise. Once you wake up, it says sit down. What does that mean? Study. When it says sit down, like right now we're all sitting down, study, learn. Go ahead. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Jump down to verse 7 now. Verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. So what do you think is happening now? Once we wake up and we sit down, meaning what? We wake up to who we are, we sit down, learn, and study. Then it says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Because once you learn, now go out and teach it. Go out there and teach. That's the message here. You've learned it. You've studied. Now go out and teach it. Read. That publisheth peace. That bringeth good tidings of good. That publisheth salvation. That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. By us teaching we're singing this is music to god's ears when we're on the street teaching he said that's beautiful music i'm hearing right there go ahead for they shall see eye to eye when the lord shall bring again zion we're going to all be on one accord when he brings us together so the lord is saying right here not only have your sons fainted now i'm waking them up he says awake shake yourself from the dust once you do that he says what sit down he says sit to shake thyself from the dust arise and sit down then verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tidings that publish peace. Because you've learned it. Now go out and teach. That's the message. That brings good tidings of good that publishes salvation that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Now you're able to explain why our sons faint. Why is the black and Latin man on the bottom? Why are we trapped in the system? What is our sins that we have committed? You're able to go through the scriptures and explain that thing. Now watch this. Give me um, Proverbs 8 and 4. There's a reason why I mentioned your sons. There's a reason why it says, how beautiful are the feet of them that, uh, what does it say? How beautiful are feet of them that, bring good tidings. that brings good tidings. Okay. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him. That's what I wanted. Are the feet of him. That him goes back to your sons. Proverbs 8 and 4. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 8 and verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. There's an order. That don't mean God ain't dealing with women, but there's an order. The men must learn. Why? Because you're the soldiers. You're the warriors. You're the ones that must go out and battle face to face in a spiritual war. Not the women. It's your job. We're sitting in uh, Suriname, and, I, and they, what's the language they speak? It's like a Dutch, kind of a Dutch language. I say to the brothers, hey, I need somebody to translate. The brothers are going to say to me, we'll get sister such and such to translate for I said, what the hell is wrong with you? You translate for us. Oh, 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 oh. We got to curse them out. Then the people said we would, we would follow them, but these men are weak. I heard this thing. I was so damn vexed. I had to tell the brothers, y'all heard what these people said? Because we had a, a big meeting with all the people that wanted to learn. They said, we ain't following these dudes. They're all weak. They're weak. I was embarrassed as hell. This is why we got, brother, when you learn, that's why we got to send men out there to help build up. So this the only way we can really learn is through YouTube. It's hard to learn on YouTube. You don't have that 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 face to face, that one on one interaction. You need that thing. We go to Ghana. We thought everything was good. Brothers eating pork. We said, what the hell are you doing? He said, what's wrong with this meat? It's pork. Oh, 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 I did not know. You got to sit down, face, this is that. This, nope, nope, nope. You got to sit down with them. We go to Liberia. All the old women in the congregation is paying the young boys money to have sex with them. What the hell is going on here? What the hell are you doing? So we need men to rise up, stand up so we can say, go here, go there. And this is why you men, you need a revolutionary woman. If she ain't revolutionary minded, don't marry her. Because she's going to hinder you. Why you always got to go there? Why you got to travel? Why you got to do this? The purpose for us to get out of here is to teach this word, raise up the 12 tribes of Jacob. She don't understand that. That means she ain't ready to be a wife in here. Let her go marry Pookie or Ray Ray. She ain't ready. She ain't got that type of mindset like our four mothers. Why you, the sister, I ain't going to call her name. Why you always at the school? Why you always go out teach? Why don't you stay here with me? What the hell I want to stay here with you under your funky behind for? God called me in the truth to do a purpose. Now you would have hindered me. I thought you understood what this is about. I did. Did, past tense. I did. That was just to get you. Now that I got you, I don't understand it no more. She ain't revolutionary minded. She ain't ready for this. Let her stay single and have babies. This is going to happen. Give me Ezekiel 34, 31. Ezekiel 34, Verse 31. You look at stuff like this during the civil rights time with the Black Panther. You see the sisters. The sisters was down with Martin Luther King. They was down with the Panthers with them. But if you come in Israel, why you got to do this? Why you in the Bible? Hey, why you got to go out in the street and teach? Bishop, it's heavy that you say that because not too long ago I had, I had read an article. I might have spoke about it on one of the radio show topics, where it says Esau with the KKK and all their movements was able to do what they did because the women backed them and supported them in all that evil that they were doing. So it goes to show you how integral having the woman supporting the troops being behind that mission is for the overall success of, of an organization. Exactly, 100% correct. You need the woman to support the troops. If she can't support you, brothers, don't marry her. She ain't worth your time. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34 and verse 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. That's a heavy statement. There's an order. Like I said, I ain't saying the Lord ain't dealing with the woman. But the men as the warriors. You are the soldiers. We are the soldiers. We have to be on the front line in people's faces. What's the scripture? Uh, exalting the voice, shaking the hand. Not sparing the people. That's our job, not the woman's job. Okay, from there. Give me Acts 1 and 14. And the women got to understand that thing. If you're going to be successful here in Seattle, Washington, the women must understand this thing and not hinder the men. And you men got to understand that and be on the front lines of battle. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So you see that? 
It said they were on one accord with the women. The women must be on one accord with you. Some of you might have wives. They're not on one accord with you. They're like a scorpion. Always contradicting and fighting you. Let them go if they can't get right. Don't seek to marry them. Women got to know they must be on one accord with us. Not contradicting. That ain't what Juanita Bynum said. We don't give a damn what Juanita Bynum said. We going with what the Lord says. That ain't what Joel Osteen. To hell with Joel Osteen. That ain't what T.D. said. He said, woman thou art loose. To hell with that too. Lord ain't dealing with that. From there. Hey, Bishop. Yes. This is what you was talking about earlier. Put the image up. Yes, right there. Y'all see that? And they got on their skirts. They didn't have the truth. They didn't have the scriptures. But they was down. That's what y'all need. Them, them Masada Shakur women. Them revolutionary minded women. Okay. What? No one can hear you mumbling. Nation of Islam also, they had the women also dressed in order, and they were also in accordance with the, with the men too. Exactly. Remember when we instituted the garments, one of our main challenges was the women. Why we got to wear garments? Why we got to look the same? I want to look better than her. I don't want to look like that her over there. Try to bring us on one accord. Try to bring us on one accord. When you're reading the book of Samuel, remember it said David's daughters that were virgins, they had the same garment. And that's how everyone identified these are the virgin daughters. Yeah, maybe we're going to have to bring that back. Yeah. Well, we're going to come up with something. Trying to bring us in that one mindset, one accord. What you got? Go ahead, go ahead. Y'all got that picture I done sent? Where we sending it? It's very important. So the Lord said, the flock of my pastor, oh, men and the women must be on one accord with us. One accord. Okay. Must be. There we go. Yeah, I love. I always love that picture. I always love that picture. When I was little, I used to always see that thing. That's a nice picture right there. It shows a level of unity. Yeah, you notice that that's all pair. You see how they do like this. Yeah. You don't see that uh, they follow the devil. Us, we do. We line up like that. Yeah. Look at. Look at. Yes. You know you're right about that. I didn't think about that. Nobody says they're Illuminati, yeah. follow the devil. Yeah. You saw how, because it was, I think it was a triangle. If we do that, we follow Illuminati. We're paid off. That's why we like that. Wow, wow. Yeah, click the other images. The different ones, the different ones. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Ain't none of them complaining. Why we got to look the same? Why we got to do that? I think a lot of these women in Nation of Islam might repent. Yeah, 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 Bishop, but what That's about... That's just a prayer. What, what about... Why we have to cover our head? Yeah. Why we got to cover our head? Ah! That's what the Israelite women say. Oh, God. What the hell's wrong? And we got scriptures that show this, that, and the other. Yeah. They ain't, the nation of Islam ain't got no scriptures that show nothing. Nation of Islam got it from the Bible. Exactly. <laughs> the Muslims got all that from the Bible. That's what he did. It's, a, it's an Arab remix. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 20. Verse 1, Matthew 20 and verse 1. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 20 and verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Remember Christ said pray for laborers. We can't stop praying for laborers. Why? Because the scriptures say many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. How are you going to know if you're chosen or not? If you endure to the end. That's how you know if you're chosen. Endure this truth to the end. Go ahead. And so now, I'm sorry. For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in the vineyard. So this, this householder is the Lord. The laborers is us. Us men, mean for, first and foremost. Go ahead. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So the penny of a day represents the kingdom, represents the promises given to our forefathers that we're going to inherit. That's what the penny represents. Go ahead. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So you see that part there? 
and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Give me that Sirach 33. We're coming back. I just want y'all to see this standing idle in the marketplace. This, if, if, if you're thinking, if you got your thinking caps on, this goes back to Isaiah 51 and 20 about your sons hanging on all the streets. They're being what? Idle. So now look at Sirach 33 and 27. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 27. Send him to labor that he be not idle, for idleness teaches much evil. When you idle, you hanging on a corner, what are you thinking about? Evil. There's five brothers hanging on a corner with their pants below their butt. They're not talking about, hey, how can we fix the community, my brother? They're not talking about that. They're talking about other things, evil, whatever level it is. Whether it's how to get some booty, how to sell some crack, whatever it is, it's evil. That's the reality. That's what the Bible is revealing to us. So I'm going, nah, bro, you shouldn't say that. See, see, you see? That's why I don't like you Israelites. We're just going to keep it 100 with you. Nobody's on the corners hanging out trying to figure out how to fix the community. That's not happening. We're talking about booty. We're talking about uh, 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 hustling. hustling, how to make quick money. That's what we're talking about, evil. All right, we ain't talking about, hey, I got an interview coming up. Hey, I got this new job investment. That's not the conversation on the corners. So you, y'all, brother, you can fool yourselves if you want. That ain't reality. You know, you be on the internet, black people be, we just lie to cover up evil. Said, no, 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 this is just evil. Just stop, stop. We don't, I mean, go back now, Matthew 20. Yeah, I mean, but uh, that's the problem with the white community. Because the reason is like that, because we cover evil. Mm-hmm. St. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace mm -hmm. and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. When it says go ye out into the vineyard, if you're thinking, we just read in Isaiah 52, verse 7 and 8, how beautiful are the feet of them. How did it go? Let's go that go out and upon the mountains and preach the tidings, the tidings of, peace. of peace. It's saying the same thing here. This is what the parable is talking about. Everybody with me? Uh-huh. It's saying the same thing, just using different words. Read on. Verse 5. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. When it says no man has hired us, we have no purpose. We have no purpose. We're just hustling. We have no purpose. So now our job when we're on the street teaching is to hire them. Hire them to do what? To raise up the 12 tribes of Jacob. That's the, that's the hiring. Learn this truth. Why? Because the Lord's going to give you the reward, not us. We can't pay you to wake up your people. Okay. That's like uh, I saw a, a Maury show. The woman had to pay the dude, the brother. She had to pay her man to babysit his kids. That made no damn sense. She had to pay him to watch his kids. Ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. The black community destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The whole audience was like, boo. You know they love the boo. Boo. Yeah, until they find out he's not the daddy. But it's crazy. So now, likewise, the Lord is hiring us to do a job to wake up our people. So, and a reward, find me that in Hebrews 6, the Lord is not uh, unjust to forget your labor of love. I can't quote. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Six, what verse? Ten. Five, read that for me. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So who's going to give us the reward? The Lord. You got that crew of brothers that left talking about, y'all are supposed to pay us to do this work. Then you stupid precepts like the Persians paid Nehemiah and their money to help build the temple. Listen, listen, we're not the Persians. We don't got no money to do that. For you to go and raise up your people, you want us to pay you. No, the Bible. Read, 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 read again. For, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. God's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Go ahead. 
Which he have showed toward his name. Which you have showed toward his. You ain't doing this for me. You ain't doing this for Deacon Lava or Deacon Ithan. This is we doing this for the Lord. Go ahead. Was that it? No, sir. In that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Us ministering to the saints, we're going to waking them up. When they come in the truth, we're trying to help them the best way we can. Spiritually and physically. Okay? On all levels, when they come into the truth, we're trying to help. Okay, was that it? Go back. There's, there's actually right, more sir. in the next couple of verses. Go ahead. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So the same thing that was done for you, we got to do for the next group that comes in. Go ahead. Was that, that ye, it? That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See there? So we got to be patient, okay? Follow the work that we've, we're setting the guidelines for you. Follow the way we're showing it to you. Let's go back to Matthew 20. Matthew chapter 20. And verse 6, and about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire. Beginning from the last unto the first. So we all gonna get our our high. What you got, Aita? I got um Sirach, uh eleven and verse twenty two and twenty three. Twenty three is the key verse. The book of Sirach, chapter eleven and verse twenty two. Uh huh. The blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly. Right. The Most High will bless you when you're godly. Go ahead. And suddenly he maketh his blessing to flourish. Because when you read above, it goes into a man that's going through poverty. And it mentions later on, when that man, become, when that man is faithful, the Most High will eventually bless him or her. Next verse, watch this. Say not, what profit is there of my service? That's what we got from the brothers that left. Mm -hmm. what, what did I get for my service? What did I get? What profit is my service? Go ahead. And what good things shall I have hereafter? And what do I get for it? The Lord says, do not say those things. Do not say that. He's telling you what to say. Read the next verse. Again, say not, I have enough and possess many things. And what evil can come to me hereafter? So he's telling you what things you should not say before the Lord. Don't say what good things have I done. Because your most will reward you in his own time. He will reward you. Now go back to Hebrews 6 and 10. Also, you mentioned earlier about um, the parable in Matthew 20 about um, you go out and teach, you give our people purpose. Real quick, if I can. Mm -hmm. Wisdom of Psalm 8 and verse 7. And I sent you something, Captain Abiel, a definition link. One of my favorite verses. It was in the Psalm 8, verse 7, regarding giving brothers purpose. Because again, that, and that, this point I made earlier, this now, ties into your purpose. Acknowledging your purpose of what you're here, here to do. Was in this Psalm, walk. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8, and verse 7. And if a man loves righteousness. If a man loves righteousness, go ahead. Her laborers are virtues. Her labors are virtuous. Go ahead, or virtues. Go ahead. For she teacheth temperance. She'll teach you to be temperate, to have temperance, to be patient. Go ahead. And prudence. And she'll teach you wisdom. Go ahead. Justice and fairness. Fortitude. Go ahead. And what? And fortitude. And what? And fortitude. Go ahead. Which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. So these things you have are more profitable in your life. Um, temperance, prudence, justice, and fortitude. I want fortitude. Fortitude definition, watch. And we're going to read the synonyms that go with fortitude. Blow it up some. If you can read that, please. Uh, fortitude. Courage in pain or adversity. Now we're in captivity. And captivity is pain and adversity. So it says courage you're given through wisdom. It gives you the courage to, in pain or adversity. Watch this. Read on. Synonyms. Courage. Bravery. Strength of mind. Strength of character. Moral strength. Moral strength. Toughness of spirit. Watch this. Firmness of purpose. Firmness of purpose. Firm Firm that's all I want. I want that part. Firmness of purpose. The Bible gives us a firmness of purpose. That's what wisdom gives you. That's why we go out, we go out and teach in the street or whatever. Um, and you teach the people the laws and commandments, over time they acquire the understanding of what their purpose is and they're firm in it. That goes, the word firmness goes into the word being steadfast. It's the same thing. 
There's more. Read the rest. The uh, the uh, the firmness of purpose goes into Isaiah forty five seventeen that we should never be ashamed uh, nor confounded. Right, nor confounded. Right. Read the rest of it. Yeah, man. Uh, even though with the Isaiah Bishop went out, is that fifty one and twenty? Mm -hmm. Always go go with that too. Right. Go ahead. Read on. Read the rest of it. Strong mindedness, resilience, resilience, backbone, backbone. Not a cow that runs off like a hireling. Fortitude gives you a backbone. Go ahead. Spine. Metal. Metal. Spirit, nerve, pluck, pluckiness, uh, daughtiness, daughtiness, fearfulness, valor, no fearlessness, 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 valor, like men of valor. Go ahead. In in intrepidity, stout heartedness, stout heartedness, endurance. Drink more. Those definitions are great. Go ahead. Stoicism. That means you're serious. Your face is serious. Austerity. It goes in conjunction with that. Steadfastness. See, I mentioned that earlier. I didn't know that was there. Steadfastness. Go ahead. Patience. That goes back to temperance. Long suffering. That, that goes back to endurance. Forbear forbearance. Tenacity. Pernacity. Pernacity. Perseverance. Resolve. Resolve goes back to purpose again. Resolve. A goal. A, um, a mission. Go ahead. A vision. Go ahead. Resolution. Resolute, resoluteness, determination. Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Spirit. That's spirit. Caucasian terms for being brave. Go ahead. Informal guts. Informal term is guts, grit, and spunk. So that's what, fortitude, that's what wisdom gives you. So for that word fortitude, it's not that much of a big word, but it has a lot of excellent synonyms that go along with it, in conjunction with it. That's all. You know what I like about that fortitude? The, the first meaning said courage in pain. And in the first thing. Get that in Micah 4 and 10? Yeah. Courage in pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we learn fortitude, courage in pain. Is that what I want? Yes, it is. Go ahead. The book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. L no revolution is without pain. I don't know what y'all thinking. There's no such thing as any type of revolution where there is no pain. You think the civil rights struggle, they didn't have no pain? Oh, they had a whole lot of pain. For us to be able to do what we do today, there's been pain, okay? When I came in, the, the elder was always getting be, uh, beat and locked up by the police just to go on the street and teach the gospel, okay? So the Most High got Esau back off us just for a little while. We went to Cuba, got locked up. They said, oh, no, y'all ain't teaching us out here. We were like, what the hell is this? There ain't no revolution taking place here in Cuba. They said, no, they had us on lock. We went to the hotel, said, we're going to teach you. They said, no, you're not. So Yahshua said, but you got the prostitutes and people's taking the prostitutes to their room. Oh, you was with us. They said, yeah, you could do that. But you can't teach their Bible. You're not taking the Bible and with people to your room to teach that. Oh, so what the hell is going on here? We couldn't even sit in the lobby. Yeah, right. right. It was just a handful of us in the lobby, and they didn't, want, they didn't even want us there. Yeah, what, what you guys doing and it's here? heavy what you said about revolution, because that's exactly what the, uh, what the captain that was detaining us said yeah. he goes you got to understand something this country doesn't need another revolution right he says we're nervous when we see things like that mm -hmm. it's heavy he said, he said i could understand two of you coming here and talking to the people but there's 10 of you that's a revolution mm. yep hey two by twos why read that again <laughs> Micah, i know brothers are scared of that two by two thing we're gonna have to reinstitute that thing christ did it we're gonna do it too Hey, it started off. It was just two of us when we started. Go ahead. Chapter 4, verse 10. So we went here because of fortitude. What we read in Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 7 about fortitude. Mm -hmm. Read this. Be in pain. Be in pain. Remember, fortitude meant courage in pain. So it says, be in pain. Go ahead. And labor to bring forth. And labor to bring forth. Guess what? You in pain. You labor to bring forth. To keep the school open, you have to labor. You got to pay the light bills. You got to pay the internet bills. You got to keep the doors open. You got to labor. And it's going to be some pain. Some people are going to struggle more than others. That's what happens. That's how we started. You know what I'm talking about. That's how we started. Okay. Read that again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. Mm -hmm. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. You know what it says, like a woman in travail? A woman's uh, childbirth pains is not all at once. 
she has the contractions might be like every what is it might be every 10 minutes every five minutes every two minutes so in this truth we're going to have periods of ways we just teach and teach and everything's going good then there's going to be pain bah! oh this brother got locked up this happened to that sister that happened to that brother what oh, that's the pain so the lord says expect it don't think this is going to be as easy smooth says it's not so why does the easy smooth time there's no contractions he says y'all better study Get yourselves together because the contract. Here comes the contraction. Ah! Everybody's in pain. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Lord said, so y'all wasn't, wasn't ready for it. We wasn't ready. We wasn't ready. He already told you there's going to be contractions in this truth. Did you finish that verse? No, sir. Go ahead. Like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out, to, out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. That's America. There shalt thou be delivered there shall thou be delivered so that's talking about america let's go back to matthew 20 and what verse were we in in matthew 20 i can't remember verse 8 bishop saint, okay go ahead saint matthew chapter 20 and verse 8 so when even was come the lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward call the laborers and give them their hire beginning from the last unto the first and when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. So let's end that right there. Now watch this. Watch what I'm going to go to now. Give me Luke 14, 16. Luke 14, verse 16. Watch this. Wait a minute. Let me get it. Luke 14, verse 16. Go ahead. St. Luke chapter 14 and verse 16. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. So this is the Lord. He made a big uh, supper. He wanted many of the Israelites to come to this supper. Go ahead. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. So he sent the prophets out. He says, bid them that they come. All things are made ready. Go ahead. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. And fir the first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. Wait, stop. Notice that part. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. So now this, is, this whole parable that we're reading now is about Christ is about to be sacrificed. He's bidding everyone to come, telling Israel, repent, repent, come into this truth. Now watch this. It says they all with one consent began to make excuse. Give me that precept, uh, Sirach 32:17 about excuses many of us in here we got excuses why we can't dedicate our lives to this truth the book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 17 a sinful man will not be reproved but find it an excuse according to his will you see that it says a sinful man cannot be corrected but will find an excuse according to what his will is you got to know what a man's will is or a woman's will is. What is in their, the recesses of their mind? Why are they making excuses? What's behind the curtain? Okay. You got to pull back the curtain sometime. Here we're a brother in D.C. talking about, uh, you know, brother, I think all nations can be saved. We said, what? All nations? How long you been with us? Five years. All right. Pull a curtain back. Pull a curtain back. There's a white woman in his bed. That's why you're coming with that crap now. All nations can be saved. Here go the next brother. There's nothing wrong with smoking weed. I'm never going to tell somebody it's a sin to smoke weed. All right, let's pull back the curtain. Oh, you still smoking weed. You got it. It says a sinful man will not be corrected, but will find an excuse according to his will. Okay. That's like the brother can't find a job. I don't want to find a job. You want to leech off the woman. I just want to, marry, I'm going to find me a woman with some money. Why do you want a woman with some money? I'm sick of being poor. Is that the real reason? No, pull back the curtain. You're a bum. You're lazy. Let's go back. Luke 14. St. Luke chapter 14, verse 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I have to go prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, 
and therefore I cannot come. So excuse after excuse after excuse. Now watch this. Give me Luke 9. We're coming right back here. We're coming back. Give me Luke 9, verse 57 down. Luke 9, verse 57. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That's what brothers often say. I'll follow you. I love the truth. Sisters too. Wherever you say go, Lord, I'm going. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Pause right there. You know, I heard a brother or a camp, a particular camp, say this is the verse that proves Christ was homeless. I'm like, are you insane? Holeless, holeless. Here's the proof he wasn't homeless. John 1, 38 and 39. Jesus Christ, or what you want to say, Yahweh Shai was not homeless. He was not a bum. You morons. Read that. John 1, verse 38 and 39. The book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They say unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Where do you live? Master, where do you live? Go ahead. He saith unto them, Come and see. Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt. And they, saw, they went and saw where he lived and what? And abode with him that day. And stayed with him that day. Was that the whole verse 39? For it was about the 10th hour. So Christ had a home. He had a house. What the hell are you talking about? Go back to Luke 9 now. Luke, People are retarded. Luke 9 verse 58. Uh, yeah, yeah, like you said, when you move the curtain, you find out that brother is a bum. There you go. The brother's a bum. So now because he's a bum, Christ is a bum. Yahweh is a bum. Yeah, right. Luke 9, 58 again. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. So now let's lose discernment. What is he talking about then? He was traveling, doing the work from city to city. That's what he was doing. He said, listen, I ain't got no place to chill. My home back there. I'm doing the work. I'm going this way to teach. Y'all understand this? People, we're simple as hell. Read on. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Where are you at? Verse 59. You're back in? St. Luke 9.59. You're in Luke. Okay, go ahead. We're going down to 62. Yes, sir. Verse 60. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. That's a Now imagine we said that one of y'all. Y'all be, oh, that's disrespectful. Bishop, the hell's wrong with you saying that to us? You're a cult. Well, Christ said it. Wow. See that? I'll follow you, Lord, wherever you go. Christ said, really? Let the dead bury the dead. Watch how the room clear out. To hell with this cult. What verse you at again? Verse 60. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Right. You know what it means that the dead bury the dead? The dead bury the dead is not talking about a brother or sister in the truth who knew the law, kept the law, and died. It ain't talking about that. It's talking about, here we go. You women know what I'm talking about. Your, your auntie, your cousin, your cousin Pookie or Ray Ray, who you know is the devil. You know that, you know that they ain't no damn good. That, and all your family, we gonna have the uh, 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 funeral on the Sabbath. Here we get the phone call, ring, ring. Is it a sin for us to go to funerals? Listen, if you wanna go, you do what you're gonna do. Now, cause I, if I say, let the dead bury the dead, guess what it is? Oh, it's a cult. You the devil. Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. My cousin passed away. I said, I told my wife, listen, I got, I got to do the Lord's work. My cousin heard the truth. She said, to hell with that. I'm not doing it. What the hell am I going to the funeral for and say, and say what? You want me to do the funeral? What you want me to say? Because if I say something, everybody going to turn on me. They're going to throw me up, beat the hell out of me, and throw, drag me out the city. <laughs> what verse you at? That was verse 60, Bishop. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, 
but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. See, that's why they call Christ a hard man. To hell with your wicked family. That's, that was what he was saying. To hell with your wicked family. It ain't your family that's keeping the commandments. It's that wicked, they still on crack. You know, they're still doing drugs. They're in and out of jail. They don't want to change. He said to hell with them. That's, that's why they call him an austere man. A hard man. Wow. Now, where was we at originally? We was in... Luke 14. Yes. Luke 14 in what verse? And we were... Verse... verse 20. Read 19 again. St. Luke chapter 14, verse 19. And another said... I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I, and I go to prove them. I prayed thee, have me excused. Excuses, excuses. Excuses are like buttholes. Everybody got them, and they all stink. <laughs> go ahead. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Now, let me explain something to you. Now, I'm going to give you the little context of all these people that made excuses. Watch this. Give me Acts 11 and verse 19. All these people, that, who are they? The book of Acts, chapter 11 and verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. They only preached the gospel to the kingdom of Judah. That's who the gospel is going to initially. Watch this. Go back to Matt, uh, Luke 14. Now we're in verse 21. Watch this. St. Luke chapter 14 and verse 21. So you had the scribes, the Pharisees, the leadership. They were all rejecting. Ah, I got excuses. I can't come. I'll come tomorrow. Not now. I got things to do. Okay. Watch this. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. He said, Bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. Who's that? Give me Acts 13.46. Acts 13.46 is going to sum it up in this one verse. The book of it's Acts. going to explain who those were made excuses and who's the halt, the maimed, and the poor. Go ahead. Acts 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Who was that? The Jews, the kingdom of Judah. Go ahead. But seeing ye put it from you, you reject it, you make excuses, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Lo, we go into Northern Kingdom. That's what he's saying. He said, you Southern Kingdom, you keep rejecting. All right, we go into Northern Kingdom. That's what the parable, Christ gave the parable on it. Go back now. I don't know, know y'all kind of weak right now. Be quiet. <laughs> Mercy, Bishop. Okay, okay, okay. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. He said, There's still room. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servants, Go out into the highways and hedges. Meaning, go out into the streets. Go ahead. And compel them to come in. Compel them, force them, show them the error of their ways. Make them want to come in. That's you men. Compel. Can we look up the word compel? Yeah, yeah. We know what this word compel mean. Can we look that up? Compel. Compel them. Why y'all talk so rough? Why are you always saying people are going to die? It said compel them. Gonna You're going to die. Read that. The definition of compel, 
force or oblige someone to do something. See that? Force or oblige someone to do something. Let's read those synonyms. Synonyms. Operates. Pilot. Wait, where are you at? Force. Sorry. Force. Coerce into. Pressurize into. Pressure. You always trying to pressure us to come and repent. God says pressure them. Mm -hmm. Force them. Go ahead. Impel, drive, press, push, urge, pre prevail on. Click more. Go ahead. Dragoon into. Dragoon. <laughs> brow, brow beat into. Bully into. Brow beat them. Bully them to repent. That's what the Bible Christ said. Compel them. Bully them. Push them. Pressure them. This is heavy. No, no, you shouldn't talk to them like that. Why don't you talk soft and nice? That's not what the Bible yep. said to do. Uh, that's Isaiah 30. Right, Isaiah 30. Uh, 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 another one. Uh, lift your, what's the one? Yeah, yeah lift up your voice. Lift your voice. Like 58 and 1. Yeah. Lift up your voice. like. No, don't talk like that. You're pressuring people. We're supposed to pressure them. We're trying to save their soul. Yeah, yeah, you remember one brother said, no, you don't understand. The northern kingdom, you can talk to them like that. Right, right. Your guy's too wolf. The southern kingdom, you're too wolf. Yeah. Let me talk to them. Jesus Christ loves you. <laughs> Jesus. Let's go back. St. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out in, into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That my house may be filled. Now that goes with, now watch this, Isaiah eleven eleven. So not only to that, those that were over there in those regions, he said there's more room to bring Israel in. He said that's what, there's more Israelites. It's Isaiah eleven eleven. Yeah, yeah, hold oh, on. And, and just in case you come across uh, uh, apologetics, apologetics, them. Um, in, in Greek, the word uh, compel, it means to necessitate. Compel, drive to, constrain by force or threats. Mm. So by force or what's that by word? By force, threats. Threats. Threaten them to come in. Right. That's when people get mad at Asa. Judgment. Why do you always say you're going to die? You're going to die! God's going to kill you. Oh, why are you going to say that? Mm -hmm. You're all upset because you don't know the Bible. You've never been taught. Now you're learning that you're all I'm offended. So in any language, it means exactly what you just read uh, above. Same exact thing. Yeah, you remember, I think her sister saying that when she saw Dick and his hop talk, I said, nobody twerked you. <laughs> then she <laughs> said, she keep watching. She said, damn, that's hatred in that thing. That's what she said. And but no one understood what you just said. What I'm saying is, <laughs> listen, did you understand my language? No, I didn't. That's what, <laughs> what did you say? I didn't get it. <laughs> listen. She's saying that she's been watching Dick and Aesop. You remember? So Dick and Aesop keeps saying that uh, uh, hatred. People hit me. Okay. She's saying that nobody hit you, Nick. Just like that, right? So she says she sit there watching, watching for a while. Then she said, damn, this thing is real. They do have hatred. That's why the Lord say, force them. Mm -hmm. Tell them. You understand? But she just came in. She thought that Dick and Issa were just talking the talk. Right, right. Now I understand you, Lava. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. <laughs> Where are we at? Isaiah 11, verse 11. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. This is a, uh, there's more. Right. In the hedges. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Mm -hmm. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So it's telling you right there, that's the outcast, the dispersed, that's the main, the halt, and there's more. That's what he's talking about. So let's go back. So we, I think you finished Luke 14. What verse did you go down to? I finished verse 23, Bishop. Oh, read 24, I'm sorry. St. Luke 14, verse 24. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. That's those that made excuses. I'm busy. My somebody died. This and that. This and that. I can't get. Now watch this. Second Timothy 2. So, brothers, when, when we out there on the streets teaching, there's one thing we got to know that w while we're teaching. I've seen brothers go to Puerto Rico and teach dogs. <laughs> taught, giving flies to little animals. I'm like, what the hell is this? You're giving flies to babies. 
Not just in Puerto Rico. I see it in Haiti too. No, 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 no. That's a big no, no. Yeah, that's a big no, no. That's a big no, no. That happened to Haiti. I saw, I, I saw that with all four of my eyes. Watch, watch what it says. Second Timothy two and two. Watch this. Second Timothy chapter two and verse two. Pay close attention to this. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. The same commit thou to faithful witnesses. So shall be able to teach others Wait, also. Read it again. Read it again. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Give this truth to faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others also. Here you got a dude high on methadone. You giving him or her a flyer. Can that, dude or, can that woman or man teach anybody? They can't even hear you. They're like, uh, uh. Here's a flyer. Let me go over the scriptures with you. Leave them alone. They're not mentally, physically, or spiritually ready. It says, read it again so we understand what we got to do. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Commit this truth to faithful men. Go ahead. Who shall be able to teach others also. Who shall be able to teach others. You got to see a man or woman who's in their right frame of mind. Who's, who's sober. Not high as hell. Leave them alone. They ain't ready yet. So now. That was the, remember we're talking about the, the uh, we did eight hours on sleep, eight hours on work, eight hours on God. Remember I broke that down into three. God, family. Now I'm talking about family for a second. First Corinthians chapter 7. Now we read verse 29, but I want to read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29. Uh-huh. Watch this. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. So some brothers who don't have any understanding will read that and say, see, I'm supposed to ignore you. That's not what it's saying. Here's the proof what it's saying. Jump over to verse 33. Verse 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. So there's what? Balance. There's a balance. So God comes first, then the wife. That's verse 29 is saying put God first. Then he comes back in verse 33, say if you're married, you got to do those things to please your wife. How do you do, do that? Communication. You got to know her likes and dislikes. Okay. Next verse. Verse 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, that she may please her husband. How she may please her husband. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 now. I tell you, and, and the reason I, I stipulate family, because I've been hearing such horror stories from you men and women that rush because of a big button smile. You just rush. Read that. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. Some of you have already been married, and your marriage is dwindling, the, the, the joy. But watch what it says here. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life of thy vanity. Your, van your life is your vanity because it's short. The Lord says, in another scripture, Psalm said, I'll give you 70 years to live, maybe 80 Okay, so that's why it's saying the life of our vanity, because life is short. It says live, jo read that again. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest. That's what, brothers, you want to live joyfully with the wife who you love? You need a revolutionary woman, a woman that understands what this truth is about, who's not trying to hinder you, hem you up, take you to court. You don't want that. Do, do, who want, do any of you want that, you brothers? No, sir. No, you don't want that. How the hell don't want that? You want to be able to live joyfully with her, which means what? She got to understand what this truth is about. That's when joy come in the house. When you come, you've coming out from doing the work, she got a, she got a uh, dinner ready for you. She going to give you some. She's happy you're home. 
You're having a good time. What do you got? The, you got your favorite music on that when you first met her, you're dancing together. Having a good time. Let's live joy. Read it again. Read it again. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life, of thy vanity. What about the kids? Give me that Deuteronomy 6. So there's a balance between God with God and family. Family comes under God. Live joyfully with your wife. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse 1, then jump to 7. Verse 1. Now these are the commandments and statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. Jump down to 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So you know what they're saying? It's letting us know there must be a game plan to bring the children in this truth. And that's where the woman's job comes in. You got sisters that want the man, stop teaching out there on the street and come home and teach the kids while she watch uh, Edge of Night, while she watch uh, 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 Bootleg Marriage. What's the name of that thing? Bootleg, whatever that thing is. Boot Camp Marriage, whatever. No, sister, your job is to get these children motivated and molded into this truth. While the husband is out on the street battling with the dregs of the society of our people, you're supposed to be home with those children, all right? Teaching them, molding them. Give me that one in uh, Maccabees chapter 7 about she said, I endured the troubles of education. Second Maccabees 7, thank you. You know what I want? I can't remember the verse. It's a woman with the seven sons. Verse 27. Verse 27. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 27. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the, cru the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language. And notice, and when you read this chapter, they never mention her husband. They never mention her husband at all. It's her and the seven kids. Go ahead. Spake in her country language on her, this matter. Which was Hebrew. Go ahead. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bare thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. That's what I want to get right there. She endured the troubles of education. That goes back with Deuteronomy 6 verse 7. Teach us, go back to Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. I'm, I'm bringing this out for family because you get brothers that come from work or they come from camp and some of these sisters, first thing they do is throw the baby in your lap. You know what I'm talking about. Here, hold the baby. What the hell is this? Read that. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You got to teach the commandments diligently unto your children just like that woman did. And shalt talk of them. When thou sittest in thine house? When you're in your house, you got to talk about the commandments. Make it fun for the kids. Put them in scenarios. That's what the woman got to do. She got to come with creative ways. You don't always have to sit there with the Bible and say, thou shalt not steal. You got to create scenarios, sisters. You got to become clever. You got to find out, how can my child pick this up and learn? That's her job. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. When you're walking down the street. You gotta, if you see something happen, hey, what law is that? The child should, after a while, should be, this is that law, ma. Okay, when you're walking down the street, you don't go, hey, stop, we're walking this, so stop. Let me get my Bible out. Read, thou shalt not commit a, no, no. You say, hey, you see Pookie right there, is that his wife? No, mommy, that's uh, Pookie's married to such and such. So what law are they breaking right now? Oh, that, that's the adultery law, ma. That's right, there you go. Go ahead. And when thou liest down? And when you lie down, you at what? You're about to, I mean, you at home about to go to sleep. You still coming up with creative ways. Hey, let's send them some prayers. Let's figure this, let's talk about this law before you go to bed. We're going to talk about this law right here. Go ahead. And when thou risest up. And when you wake up. It's the woman's job. That is her job. That's what Titus 2 was explaining. But like some of these sisters get it twisted. They want you to do that. You, you do that. It ain't good enough. You just finished arguing with the LGBT community out there. Now you got to come home and figure out a way to teach the kids while she sit there and watch The Bachelorette. It make no damn sense. She's supposed to support the troops. Was that it? From there. 
from there. Sirach 14 and 11. We're almost done. Sirach 14 and 11. The book of Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 11. Watch this. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. You know what? That actually goes with better. I don't know why I wrote it right there. But that precept actually goes better with when we read above about, remember we read about money. And it said, help your neighbor according to your power. And make sure, what ver where was that at? Make sure you don't fall into the same, somebody help me out here. Mm. Sirach, Sirach 29 verse 20. Yes. This precept that we just read goes with that one. So write that up there. Because you're supposed to do good for yourself. Nobody's saying you can't buy yourself a new pair of shoes. Read it again. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. It's giving you a balance also there. Do good to yourself, but give the Lord his portion. So there's still a balance there. You got to do for this truth. And then the Lord is saying you do for yourself too. Comb your hair, brush your teeth, look nice, buy a new shirt once in a while. Okay, we know women do it. They put themselves first anyway. So the Lord is saying, do good to yourself, but give the Lord his portion. So now, before we close out, I'm going to talk about health. We talked about God, family, and now I'm talking about health. I'll tell you, I'm going to start talking ish. I can't really get dirty, grimy like I want to, but I'm going to start right here. Give me that First Timothy 4 and 8. This is for all you love handle brothers and sisters out there. My love handles are so big. I got fat back. My back is fat. I got rolls upon rolls. This is what the Bible says. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little. Bodily, he didn't say profits nothing. He said it profits a little. Why? Why is it profit a little? Because we get old. You get, no matter, you get in your prime of life, you, your peak strength. But as you get older, you tend to get a little weaker and frailer. But Paul says bodily exercise profits little. Go ahead. But godliness is profitable unto all things. He says the main thing is godliness. Learn that Bible. But So he notice he puts exercise and godliness in the same verse, in the same sentence. So them two things go together. So this is for you. So many brothers always complain about women. She just let herself go. I met her. She was 140 pounds. Now she's 340 pounds. What the hell am I going to do with that? She want, we buy a house. She want me to pick her up and carry her through the door. I can't pick her up. She want to be on top. Get off me. I'm suffocating. So sister, you want to keep your man bodily exercise profits. The same way go for you brothers. I always give you, I'll tell you, brother, you want to know if you're out of shape. You know when you're young, you're thin, you can look down, you see your friend. If you look down and you can't see your friend, there's a problem. You got to lean back, you got to go to the mirror, something's wrong. There's, there's an obstacle there. <laughs> give me that in Ciroc 30. And, 50. and your women know about it. I'll be reading the emails, they be talking about y'all. I said, one day I'm going to read these emails, you, some of you, and they be putting names in the emails. I got to get a black man and redact the brother's name. I know who he are. He don't wash. He don't exercise. And he wanted me to do this. I don't want to do that no more than his fat stinking vine. I read it all. I'll be telling my wife, let me see that. Let me see that thing right there. The hell is this? Get that Sirach 30 and 15. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 15. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. And a strong body above infinite wealth. See that? A lot of times brothers want to be rich. The Bible says health and good estate of body are above all gold. What good is it you rich and you crippled? What good is that? You can't jet set around the country and do nothing. You're in a wheelchair. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Read on. There is no riches above a sound body. There's no riches above a sound body, a healthy body. Go ahead. 
and no joy above the joy of the heart. And no joy above the joy of the heart. Third John verse two. Third John verse two. Third John verse two. The book of Third John and verse two. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Notice he puts your health and your soul in the same sentence. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Your soul prospers through study. But he also mentions your health. Your health. And that's something we, as a people, we tend not to take care of our health. Not everybody, but most of us. Don't take care of our health. Watch this. Sirach 31, 19. Sirach 31 and verse 19. Uh, Ecclesiasticus. The book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. So here Sirach is teaching us to eat small portions small when we go to the third world countries it's like nine out of ten i dag on they say 9.9 percent people in good shape jamaica only ones you see out of shape are those jamaicans that be going back and forth to america or if you go to ghana or even liberia it's very few overweight now you might say they, that's because they ain't got no food over there they got food but they don't eat like we eat over here over here we pig out read that again a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. It's about nurturement. Go ahead. And he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Meaning gas. You puffing, blowing, you got you burping, farting. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Some of you always having nightmares, bad dreams. That's because you're you eating too much that night. You're eating late. You eating heavy, it says sound sleep comes of moderate eating. Go ahead. He riseth early. Because you got people that say, um, I can't lose no weight. And I'm a, I follow the dietary law. Well, guess what? So does a cow. An elephant follow the dietary law. Look how, how big that thing is. It will eat and eat a vegetarian diner, dinner. So likewise, some people. Read that again. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. He riseth early. Now it says rise early. Sometimes that goes, that part where he rises early goes back to, you know, when you hit that snooze button. Here it is, you're supposed to be six or seven o'clock to get up, and you hit the snooze button. I just want five more minutes of sleep, and that five minutes turns into 15 or 35 minutes. It says he rises early. Go ahead. And his wits are with him. Why? That comes with moderate eating. You eat in s small portions. You have good sleep, and you wake up, your wits is with you. Go ahead. But the pain of watching. Weary. And cola. And cola. And pangs of the belly. I mean, cola is like sickness. And pangs of the belly. Are with an unsatiable man. Can't be satisfied with food. Like in that movie, uh, what's that movie uh, with uh, Halle, Harry, ha ha Halle Berry? Monster's Ball. Remember she had a little fat son? And uh, the son had M&Ms and Twix balls and baby roof under his pillow. He had food stashed beside the sofa. This dude had candy bars everywhere. And she said, he's not losing no weight. He, I can't get him to lose weight. That little boy eating all kind of, he had food stashed under the table. Some of y'all the same way. You women know who you are. You got a turkey underneath the pillowcase? The hell is this? Give me that Ciroc 3727. Yeah, Bishop, uh, yeah, you are only one who get away with what you said. Some <laughs> brothers brother don't get away with what, what they said. I don't know. <laughs> they know I don't mean no malice. I'm just, I'm just keeping it a hundred. Right. Sirach 37, 27. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. You, everybody in here, you know what you can handle. You know what you can handle. That's what it means. Prove your own soul in your life. See what is evil for it and give not that unto it. Watch this. For all things are not profitable for all men, 
Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. And you know that verse goes with, you get women that call other women and ask what their husbands like. Don't ask another sister what her husband like. Talk to your own husband. Find out what he like, because we all don't like the same thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Yes, Here you got this dude. He got the big pot belly. He can only, he can only go uh, half around. And he only like one position because that's all he can do. Wow. You asking this sister about her man and your man is like, no, no, no. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want you to swing from that chandelier and do a backflip and jump on me. <laughs> it's all kind of scenarios. Everybody's different. You got to talk to your husband, find out what he like. Just like with the brother, you got to find out what she like. That's for another class. So look, read that. Read on. Verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. You know what a dainty thing is? Sweets. It says, be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Here I go. Now, I appreciate the sisters. They, they did a lovely job for the, um, you know, the, uh, what do we call it? Concierge team? When the sisters help. Hospitality, Hospitality committee, y'all got it. I appreciate it. But I noticed there was some candy in there. And I have not eaten candy in a long time. The second I saw it, I ate it. And I got mad after I ate it. I got mad at the sister. I said, God, going women. They always do that. Be not insatiable. I'm glad there was only like five in there. If there was more, I might have ate more. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing. Them sweets, you know what too much sweets leads to? Diabetes. That's what it's talking about. People be like, but I follow the dietary law. But look at all the sweets you're eating. All of, what's that? The, the unleavened bread, this also called sweet bread. Remember the brother that almost died last year? He said, oh, that's because Asaph said, uh, I'm supposed to eat sweet bread seven days. But you got diabetes. The hell is this? You eat a little bit. Have some common damn sense. Wife cursing us out. Ain't nobody tell your husband who got diabetes to eat only sweet bread. We ain't stupid. Sweet, sweet, sweets. And some of you women, you give your kids sweets all day. You want to know why the, the kids is halfway obese or running around. You ever see these kids that eat sweets running around like your kids? Half crazy. Just run around all up and down. Whose baby is that? That's Ithan's baby. Stop giving that baby all them sweets. Read that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, as soon as they saw me, uh, yeah, Uncle Lava, you got some candy? Yeah, Lava, Uncle Lava, you got sweet? You got candy for me? What the hell is it? Get out of here. Sit down. What verse was that? Well, I'll give it to him, though. Yeah, you be giving it. That is true. <laughs> Stop <laughs> giving them baby sweets. Evan, listen, man. Just come down, okay? <laughs> Read verse 29 again. Verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Right, because it leads to diabetes. Nor too greedy upon meat. Nor too greedy upon you. I eat, I follow the dietary law. I don't eat pork no more. But you're filled with beef and chicken and lamb. You're unsatiable. Last night, Yari took us to this Brazilian restaurant. I don't know. And every five minutes, the guys come by with this meat. You can cut the meat. Here, plow, plow. I'm like, what the hell is all of this? And I'm eating. And I'm like, I'm not, see, you're making me, where's Yari? I'm going to curse him. You're making me sick here. Beef, beef, lamb. Bison, chicken. Yeah, it was good. But, but it says, don't be too greedy upon meats. And then, you know, Captain Yashua always got a theory. Oh, well, you know, the meats don't really stay in your colon that long. You can eat it. It comes out. It may take a day or two. It don't Listen, take a day or two. What'd you say? I, no, I said, that's what you're saying. I said, it takes more hours to digest meat. But still. Who don't go around the meat, everything else you eat after, and just leave the meat there? You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, chicken. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, beef. Let so, me get by so I can come. It don't work that So way. watch this. So the Lord says. <laughs> now watch. I'm going to say what the Lord said. <laughs> don't be too greedy upon meats. He's specific on that thing. Don't be too greedy on sweets. Or meat. And because that, that's where we get sick. We sick, we overweight, we obese, our teeth falling out, we don't know why. Because we, we, are, we are doing everything in excess. Read that again. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. Why? For excess of meats bring it sickness. Read that again. For excess of meats bring it sickness. Why am I sick, Lord? He says, you eat 
too much meat. I don't understand, Lord. I'm sick. I obey your commandments. I'm not breaking none. Oh, you're breaking this one right here. Lord, I got diabetes. I can't feel my toes. You ate too much sweets. You're not listening. We are not listening. Read. And surfeiting will turn into choler. And surfeiting, write this down. Surf, look that word up, surfeit. I believe it means excess. Surfeit or surfeit. S-U-R-F-E-I-T. Look that up. Yep, blow it up, read that. Surfeits, an excess amount of something. See that? Surfeit, an excessive amount of something. So go back to verse 30 again. Verse 30, for excess of meat bringeth sickness, and surfeiting will turn into cola. Re look up that word cola. It means sickness. I think you need a Bible dictionary for that word cola. I don't think it's in a regular dictionary. I think in a regular dictionary it says anger, something like that. You got it? You got one? Yeah, C H O L E R. It's going into sickness, but let me see what it says. Yellow bile, obsolete bile, sense. It's going into sickness. Go to I told you, irritation, ready disposition to irritation, irascibility. Click that. Yeah. Blow it up, blew it up. Yeah, call it bile. By the superabundance of this fluid, anger was formed. I knew it would throw anger in there, wrath. Irritation. Irritation of the bowels. That's what it's really going into. Okay? Sickness. So go back to verse 30 again. For excess of meat bringeth sickness, and surfeiting will turn into cholera. And excess of eating will turn into sickness. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. By, by surfeiting. By surfeiting, by excess of eating... Have many perish. What? Have many perish. It's telling you overeating will kill you. You ever see these women that make a, a plate of food that look like a wedding cake? <laughs> Mashed potatoes. You got a, 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 a collard greens. I love collard greens. Collard greens. You got macaroni and cheese. You got chicken legs. You got, give me some more stuff there. Yams. You, it's, and it, it's stacked so it's like a wedding cake. And they be serving it to you. Don't serve me that. I tell my, my wife, my, don't serve it. You're trying to kill me. It's not love. I'm saying this is hatred. You're really trying to kill me. That's what it is. I'm not 20. You know when you're in your 20s, you eat all that, be no problem. You know how you eat? And he don't gain no weight. I used to be like that. But them days, it's past me now. You know when you're, you're in your 20s, your 30s, you eat like a dog. And you don't, you don't gain a pound. Yeah, this dude right here, Bishop, he's more than a kick. This dude right here is crazy. And, 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 and you got to know your body. Some brothers. Quiet, 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 quiet. Some, hey, some brothers eat and eat, and the fat gets deposited in the worst places you can think of. No, the fat don't so much go to your arms. No, 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 no. Where does it go? It hits the stomach first, then guess where it goes? With some brothers. To the chest. Now you're a size 34D. You want to know why you got your breasts is bigger than hers? The fat gets the. I'm like, Lord, why can't you put the fat somewhere else? The hell is this? Some brothers got fat rolls all on the back. Those are meat flotation devices. Meat flotation? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Read that again. Verse 31. By surfeiting have many perished. By excess of eating have many perished. Go ahead. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. If we take heed to what we've read, we shall prolong our life. So all pray. Uh, did everyone understand today's lesson? Let's get a load of hand for that thing.
make it so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.